Welcome to a whole new show for the Racer X Podcast Network. It's Daniel Blair's Main Event Moto Podcast. I'm Jason Wygant, welcoming Daniel to the Racer X Podcast Network family. We also want to thank our sponsors who are helping make this happen, including Max's Tires. Now, look, you already know that Max's delivers the best tires for your bike, including that Max's MXST tire developed by Jeremy McGrath. But did you know Maxxis also offers high-quality tires for your car, your light truck, your trailer, your ATV, your mountain bike, and much, much more? Uh, pretty much everything. So Maxxis Tires, they'll help you hook up, pull the whole shot, and beat your competition in any terrain or conditions. Just ask the king, Jeremy McGrath. To learn more, go to Maxxis, M-A-X-X-I-S, dot com. And this podcast is also sponsored by ETS Racing Fuels. With unmatched consistency and performance, ETS powers some of the most winning teams in motocross and supercross. Now, you probably know the name to the riders, but why don't you know the name of the fuel? Why? Because champions don't give away their secrets. But now, with ETS's new online ordering system, you can have ETS Racing Fuel delivered right to your door, your shop, or racetrack. So it's easier than ever to get ETS's championship winning performance in your tank. So whether you're racing a two-stroke or a four-stroke, two wheels or four wheels, visit ETSRacingFuels.com and you'll have your own winning secret to keep. ETS Racing Fuels, the most winning fuel you've never heard of. So now it's time to hand over the keys to Daniel Blair, his producer Joe, and whatever other wackos they can bring into the studio for the main event moto podcast. But first, our theme song. No, no, just kidding. The good music is on the Exhaust podcast that I run. Daniel was in a rock band, but his music's probably terrible. At least he's good at talking moto. At least I hope. We're going to find out right now. Thanks for listening to Main Event Moto. Skivvy Underwear. SKVI.com. Team team Skivvy, baby. Ah, yeah, this is nice. Snuck out here to the public pool at night with the wood grain. Team Skivvy, baby. Uh, what was that? Team Skivvy, baby. Oh, uh, what's up, Scummy? Founder of uh, Skivvy Underwear, right? Team Skivvy, baby. Yeah, Team Skivvy. Team Skivvy, baby. Team Skivvy. Skivvy Underwear. I get it. Team you don't Skivvy, baby. Keep saying. Team Skivvy, baby. Dude, you're so cool. Man, just get off me. Let, let me go. Team Skivvy, baby. Scummy, you don't have to try to drown me. Yeah, I get it. Team Skivvy. Team Skivvy, baby. Okay, all right. I'm going to get some Skivvy underwear. You are listening to the main, main show, a main event moto podcast. Powered by Nature's Bakery. And it is time for episode number 120 of the main event moto podcast. Huge shout out to Nature's Bakery, Fly Racing, Skivvy Underwears. Mika Metal, Scott USA, No Toil, Honda, Cowie, KTM of Modesto, Guts Racing, EMT Racing, Key Bar, and Rep Racing producer Joe, what up? What's up, man? You look good. Thanks, you always buddy. look good, but uh, I try. just noticed today, maybe it's just my mood, I don't know, but... Could be. You're you're glowing. You're glowing. Are you pregnant? Are you? <laughs> yes. You are? Oh, that's With good. twins. Oh, my god. One's black, one's white. Oh, that's good. That's good. That yeah. should... Uh, that should be confusing when it comes out. Yeah. All right. How you? Uh, how One you might doing? be Asian. How's the weekend? How's the? Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, Memorial Day. What are you doing tomorrow? Barbecue. Really? Yeah. Where? Probably uh, down at the folks' house. Really? They Your got, folks? Yeah, they got the pool. Mm. We'll be down there hanging out. You know what I'm doing tomorrow? Hmm. Sitting in my skivvy underwears on the couch, doing nothing <laughs> all day. I already told the wife and kids I'm sitting in the middle of the couch in my underwear. Yeah. I'll be demanding things throughout the day. Right. Because it'll be my first official all the way day off with no responsibilities at all. No work, no podcast, no riding at the track, no what else do I do? That's it. Yeah. No being a husband, no being a father. <laughs> it's my day. It's like Father's Day mixed with Memorial Day all in one. I ain't doing nothing. Yeah. But today, we do a show. Just remember to thank the troops. I do. A uh, huge shout out to everybody in our military because that's what Memorial Day is all about, folks. It's not about barbecues and sitting in your underwear, right, Joe? That's right. It's so about Home Depot sales and uh, and EagleGrit.com online. One, we have an online JC sale Bay. going on, so if you want to go to EagleGrit.com, thirty percent off the entire site. It's gonna be good. Hey, we got a a new in studio guest we've never had before. Yeah, buddy. Called in one time, I think. Yes. Oh, never yeah. been in studio. But he's here, and he's representing my favorite website, VitalMX.com. What's up, Cooksy? <laughs> what up? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here representing everybody in the forum, 
particularly the guys that trash you, I'm on it. So Perfect. Hit me with whatever you got. It's probably you with a burner account on there just trashing me all the time and trashing yourself. Hey, you get it worse <laughs> than I do on there, to be honest. Dude. I scroll on there every once in a while, and I'm like, because I like your articles. You're very... Look, you, you you push you push hard in and I would say not in a way of this like hey here's what happened the week and here's some kind of no you you stir it up which is one of the reasons why I like you but your own people man they don't have your back you get blasted on there dude they'll come in and blast me if I were if I were too nice they'd blast me if I'm yeah mean, you sissy it doesn't matter they're gonna blast you they just want to talk and they don't really care <laughs> but yeah they they really come at me it's it's gnarly and i appreciate it you know it what sucks is. is i i because i i think they do a good job guy b does a good job as far as the whole website goes but again just the the boards man they they used to infuriate me but now they don't because it's hard to be mad when you don't know what's going on over there huh joe it's like an island that i just don't go to anymore uh -huh. And Hobo Nick doesn't send me screenshots of people talking shit on me anymore, so <laughs> I kind of don't know. May, am I? Luckily for me, during outdoors, I think I just I get like left alone completely, like I'm forgotten about. So you know, me, Chad Reed, Malcolm Stewart, we just we take the summers off. No one trashes us during the summer. <laughs> hey Joe, I'm gonna start a thread right now. What's Daniel doing this summer? <laughs> yeah, totally. Daniel's sitting in his underwear on the couch is what he's doing this summer. But no, hey, good weekend of racing. You were there. You're an animal. You were there. You drove back to Vegas afterwards. And then flew here, flying home. You are committed. That's dedication, bro. That's yeah. what I do. Uh, first question I have for you, based on what I saw on the television, the turnout did not look too thick. Um, how was it in person? And but what's that place like? I've never been there. Surprisingly, of all the places I've been in SoCal, I've never been to Paula. So I don't really know the layout, but it just it didn't have a full look. What was it like in person? So I didn't go in 2010 where I heard they had like some serious nightmare stuff about getting in and out. So I was a little bit worried about that. We got there early, drove right in. I'm like, oh, everyone's going to show up late. Uh, they never came. Mm. Uh, it was empty. They had sections blocked out where it looked like people could stand to make it look like Redbud. Mm -hmm. Nobody stood there. That picture, there's a picture that's on my Instagram. I showed you those dudes. Yeah. That was all supposed to be full. It was not full. Did, it, it, dude, was there I don't a know. word of why? I mean, I heard about the Glen Helen free ride day which was again i don't know the politics behind what was going on but that that seems cheap to me um but i heard that thing wasn't that packed either so i i was there reasoning was it weather related i mean it looked nice I'm dude it was it was a beautiful day in my mind what it is is the southern california fans they're kind of spoiled they get three super crosses four super crosses you go to these stadiums they'll go to glen helen glen helen it's got some it's glen helen yeah it's you, iconic, you can see almost whatever. the whole track you can't see a whole lot at Paula. It's up there in the corner, like on an Indian reservation, right. which it's pretty nice up there. But it, it, I could see how it'd be hard to get in and out. People just didn't show up. And I'm, I, I dude, right now, if I'm Coombs, I'm calling Glenn Helen and saying, hey, guys, uh, want to work this out? Because really? there's no way. Well, how about even, you just abandon SoCal altogether? I mean, if there's no turnout, I mean, I know the industry is all there, but if the fans aren't going to be there, I mean, why do you got to, why do you got to race there? Because you got to have something on the West Coast. So go to Utah. Hangtown, go to, go to all these areas. Hangtown. We got it. We we cover it here in NorCal. We take care of it. You see the turnout in the mud? It was a rainy Saturday at Hangtown. Packed the place. You're trying to tell me those hillbillies in Utah that love moto. Dude, check out the, some of their local series. They're the only West Coast area that really gets a, a strong turnout of their local series. Really? They could hold a national. Whoa, and they would whoa. support it. Not, not that janky one at Miller Motorsports Park. Go to a real track, they could do it. Right, but before you start trashing local series, is I was at a rep racing race last night at Riverfront, and we were packed, bro. We don't make rep racing hold my beer. We killed it last night, of course, but that's because <laughs> rep beer. racing, whatever. I mean, they just, they it's the best promoter in the entire world. It is what it is, I'm sorry. I mean, just has nothing to do with the fact that they sponsored the show, and I'm really good friends with the owner, and nothing to do with that. It is the best race promotion group in the country, but okay. Yeah, my buddy, my buddy Lane. I'm gonna go out to uh, Reno for the next week or two. Just my old lady's working out there. He's gonna take me out to one of the one of the rep tracks. So oh, really? Check it out. Yeah. Oh uh, well, I, well, okay. So rep runs Prairie City when it's not Hangtown. It's called Prairie City the other 51 weeks out of the year. Uh, so Zeb and Rep Racing runs that, and then they have two tracks in Marysville, and they're putting one. I th I think they're trying to put one up over the hill into Nevada too. Who are you talking about? Lane from Big Valley. Lane Cole, but you got oh, it. Oh, nice, nice. I love Lane. Well, right on. Well, let's dive into this thing. Um, Joe, what do you want to start with? 250, 450? 250s. Two, God. Ooh, strong didn't Joe. Even, yeah. The gate. Didn't a even think about it. A lot of controversy it. going on. Well, 250s. There, a little bit there at the end. Controversy, cooked. even. What's that mean? It's like controversy, but even more. Like a bigger controversy? Yeah. yeah. 
What are you talking about? Because I, I I think I need to Google that. Yeah, is that a real word? Yeah, controversy. Now, whatever Joe. Never heard controversy. Is that an Urban Dictionary or something? It's around, man. Um, Yeah, we'll start with the two fifties. Should we start at the end and work our way to the beginning? Um, Ferrandis Cooksey on the in the car ride. You tell me. Hey, we might need to listen to the press conference because I think Dylan might have said some things about Adam and blah, 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 blah. And we had ourselves a little listen. It wasn't too spicy, but Dylan did kind of, hey, I got hit, I, you know, me and on the first moto and another rider. He kind of, at first, if you notice, he didn't say who it was, how it happened. And they kind of kept baiting him back into it. And finally, Dylan says, yeah, I don't know if it has something to do with Supercross or what. And I love how Adam didn't even take the bait on. He's like, dude, I would never do it on purpose. It's just... What happened, happened. It's chaotic, blah, blah, blah. And then it all was done. But, man, that was almost good enough to be some shit. And it Dude, wasn't, though. Adam is too good at stopping it. That's the thing. is He addresses it head on and he's makes a, it go away. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't duck it like some of the other guys. He talks to him straight up and said what happened. And, you know, what's Dylan supposed to say? No, you didn't. You really took me out because you're pissed about Supercross. Right. Like, it, you know, and, hey, props to Aaron Hansel for digging a little further because, like you said, he kind of hinted, but he didn't say it. So Yeah, well, and that's that's good on the media. It's, look, if you see an opening on these guys, if they say something, go, go deeper. You do that a lot in the Supercross press conferences, and I, I like when they do that just because, look, these guys don't give you much. And when they give you a little sliver and they're upset about something and you can tell – Dig, get them to get them to get to the the final stages of what they'll allow themselves to stay. You know what I mean? Like, because they're not gonna. Dylan's not gonna come out and say it all the way. He's not gonna go. Look, I beat him in Supercross. He choked. He was mad. He took me out today. And Adam's not gonna go. Yeah, that's what. I, they're both are gonna dance a little, but at least get him to dance enough to where we can talk about it on the podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it, I, I'm I'm pumped that they pushed him on it. But in reality, as far as the day goes, it really had nothing to do with anything other than. Dylan goes down, and he obviously had to come back for a seventh, but he did get to the podium, so he's got to be happy about that because I thought Hangtown was a little unimpressive for Dylan, and if you look at the points, he's kind of buried himself a little bit early, and he's one of the guys we considered as a favorite, so any concern? I didn't see him really on track that much. He was barely on screen. How's he look? Is he he all right? He, He looked good. He came through the pack really good in the first moto, and in his defense... Adam is angry. He's not angry, probably at, particularly at Dylan, but dude, he's riding yeah. crazy. He's coming down those hills like he doesn't care if he lives till tomorrow. It's just, yeah. I mean, the whole crowd, well, all, all 17 people were going, ooh, I mean, it was it was gnarly. Yeah, so. he, he looks extra aggressive this summer. And like you said, as far as being angry, and Joe, we talked about this, like how do you recover from Vegas? Yeah. Maybe early on in the series, a little anger is going to help push him. Once he gets into this thing, I'm, you kind of move past it. You know what I mean? Like Vegas will always be in his memory bank, but you can't live off Vegas forever. Eventually, I think he's going to have to settle down because he does look like he's pushing there was, the there envelope was that, that, pretty damn hard. That single in the back that were, they were going to flat, he was yeah, the yeah, first no, guy. He was going way over, like past the loam pretty deep. Oh my deep. God. It looked like he was going to land on the next jump. I, and y- To be there in person, to see him hit that thing at about 60 miles an hour, yeah, dude, he didn't really care about his long-term well-being hitting that thing. I'll well, tell you that much. I, he's the the, the calculated um, risk is paying off right now because he's your points leader and he's won two in a row. And when he crossed the finish line that second moto, you could tell he was really really happy, and he should be. But at the same time, another a I I wouldn't I don't know what to call him yet, but another player has emerged in this thing. And I know for points, it's not looking good for Hunter Lawrence because things haven't worked out based on the results. But that second moto. Was good, really, really good. Hunter Lawrence is for real, dude. And you, you talk about these guys that shares personality. He got on the mic and goes, "If you ain't first, you're last." Yeah, I, I've heard he's a little saucy too, <laughs> dude. Joe, he's awesome. This is a guy we're looking for. Yeah, yeah. I, again, and, and we need guys like that to be up at the front. But as far as on the track, he looked great. Uh, first moto, obviously, that was super weird with him and Jordan Smith. And I, I guess his he landed on a rock and his bike. Was losing oil. I, I guess it was losing power anyway. So he was going to go out no matter what. I, he should just be happy he went out that way and not off a jump. That track has some big jumps, and for him to be able to go out, kind of a goofy soft fall into the mush was probably a lot better than the bike KOing him off something. So um, again, for the points in the championship, he is not really in a good spot. He's lost a lot, but I think when you're a rookie like him and you're a Geico and you're you're looking long term, you're expecting this guy to be a guy for you for a while. You you take rides like that and go, mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. And that, I mean, me watching that, he, you're in my respect. The dude ripped, made the pass on Adam. Um, 
washed out, unfortunately. Probably got a little excited. You know what it reminded me of? Remember when Osborne took the lead in New Jersey yep. Supercross and then made the mistake and it was like almost like too good to be true? That's what it seemed like for Lawrence. Got the lead, was like, oh, hell yeah, and then washed it out like, oops. Almost like got a little bit caught up in the fact I think he knew he was going to win. And yeah, then made see, a little mistake. I, I didn't see that. I, I saw more. Adam kind of saw the lines that he used to catch him and pass him. And Adam was mounting another charge. He was coming back at him. And Adam's kind of got these guys all thinking like, oh, my God, this guy will. He's going to send. Where's he going to send it in on me? Mm-hmm. In places that other people weren't making passes. Adam's showing him a front wheel. And he had him thinking. And I think that had something to do with it. Yeah. I, either way, it's I, Joe, another guy in the list. I mean. I, the, I guess coming away from this race, I'm going to say that both classes are pretty damn awesome. I know AC's won two in a row, and that makes you go, uh-oh. Tomax won three or four motos, uh-oh. I don't care. The on-track action in both classes has been pretty damn awesome. I, I It's super top-heavy in both classes. And Lawrence is another one now in the 250 class you got to take serious. Um, Hampshire, you got to take serious. Cooper, Ferrandis, Nichols, AC. like hey. There is six or seven of them that... Who's going to win the next month? It's it's really, really healthy. Did they show Justin Cooper's hot lap during qualifying? Mm, I didn't watch qualifying. Oh, my God. He, well, he was two seconds faster than everybody, right? He was faster than both Roxon and Tomac. Yeah. And sometimes the, the track deteriorates, and that's why. That wasn't why. Right. He pinned it. I mean, the bike's swapping, and he just never let off. I don't think he let off until he got back to the truck. It was ridiculous. Yeah, and that's hmm. the thing. I've heard that about him for a while now at Paul, because they've all been riding there and testing or whatever. And I obviously talk to Jacob Hayes like every day. He comes back and says, dude, Justin Cooper, the way he's riding right now is ridiculous. And obviously when the gate drops and you're in the moto, things kind of almost equal themselves out. But for one gnarly hot lap, that dude's going to pull more than most. You know what I mean? Because he is not afraid to get whiskey. He's on probably the best bike. He's little. He's light. So when the track is still developing, dude, he can get away with some psycho speed. Um, but then for him, he, dude, great first moto, like awesome first moto, took care of business. Second moto, though, mm, not as good. But then again, that leads us to the start on the uh, 250 second moto. Nichols got screwed by that. A lot of people got screwed by the gate flinch. You were there. Did you think they were going to red flag that and start it over? Yeah, what was with that? Where I was standing, I just thought a whole bunch of dudes hit the gate. I'm like, what? I didn't realize how bad it was. I, I looked at it and I went and watched afterward. And so you saw weird said. stuff and moved it on. It was or weird. It looked like six dudes hit the gate at the same time, and I'm like, huh? But then they dropped. But I was a ways away, so I don't want to make any judgments. But then hearing every single guy say, "Yeah, we were taking it easy the first laps. So we yeah. thought we we're going to red flag it. Yeah, maybe red flag." Justin it. Cooper said, "You got to kind of still go for it because you don't know for sure." But he's like, "I kind of thought I was going to come around and get a red because it was so." It wasn't like a little, I mean, if it catches that many guys. I mean, I saw it. When you watch back on TV, it's like, geez, what the hell? Um, and I guess they're saying it did it on the parade lap, too. So it wasn't like they all were already kind of having an issue, which I don't know what it was. I mean, obviously, they got it fixed for 450, but I'm kind of surprised they didn't restart that thing. I mean, that's even lap Even McElrath, who got the whole shot, he said he was waiting for it to get restarted. Every single guy at the podium said it should have been restarted. It's kind of unanimous. Somebody dropped the ball. Right, and there's something going on with the... I don't know, whatever, but that was kind of weird. Um, but Cooper doesn't get the best start in the second moto, similar to Hangtown. Does an okay job, but loses the overall. Like, again, he's he's had some unbelievable first motos. He's got to get better in the second motos if he wants to compete, because it looks like Adam is getting better in second moto. You, you see, what I'm, see what I'm seeing here? Cooper's your first moto guy. Cincerella's your second moto guy. Sakamoto is going to get you the overall. It's happened now twice. So for Cooper, he's going to have to clean that up uh, and get up there more in the Sakamoto. And he isn't as good when he's not out front by himself. Have you noticed that? When he's out front by himself, he's ridiculous. But when he's in a pack, he's still a little unsure and kind of gets caught up in the pace of whoever he's around. Um, Yeah, so he he also looked a little bit... He almost looked like he had an emotional letdown for that second moto. And after he wins, I listened... I was listening to him on the podium and talk, and he does. He he almost feels like, okay, I pocketed a win. I'm good. And it's almost like that's enough. And then if I just have a uh, solid moto... And I don't even know if he's consciously doing that. But No, he, it might be just, subconscious, because that's yes. what happens to a rider is you almost have this own... A little bit of a relief. Yeah, you're, you're like, like yes. okay, no matter how it goes, I still won the first moto. And, and, and it's not this desperation where Adam has this, like, desperation, like... Every lap, I'm going to win. Right. Cooper had that in the first moto. He didn't have it in the second moto. And again, that might be where he's at on the track when he's buried in 5th to 10th. It might be a little bit of he's still learning how to win because he hasn't won that much. So you go win moto one at Hangtown, you're probably like, yes, 
and then Moto Two, you're maybe not as on fire. Maybe your instincts and your reactions aren't as quick because you're a little relieved. You know how that goes. So you do that two weeks in a row. But I, it's something that he can learn from. And I picked him to win the title this year. I haven't seen anything yet that's going to take me off that. I flip well, a coin between him, Adam, Dylan's still going to be fine. But I, I still like what I've seen from Cooper. Man, just starting off this championship, getting those Moto wins and and getting on the podium both times. He's pretty reserved on the podium. I. I don't see him getting worse. You know what I mean? He's he's gonna go back to these tracks he's been to. I just well, he's I, he's a northeast guy, and that track as it broke down, it had the the, the California chop. Yeah, the wind's blowing about. I, 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 they had to take down a lot of the banners because it was blowing so hard, mm-hmm. hitting those jumps, which was, was drying it out. It was too. sketchy, and I think he just you know it just did he want to push. The only guy that looked willing to risk his life was Adam and Hunter a little bit. But actually, you know what's weird about Lawrence is he kind of scares me here and there, a little squirrely, but ninety percent of the time he's. He's pretty efficient, too. It's almost like, you know how R.J. Hampshire, you feel like at any minute is going to go over the bars? You just kind of like, oh, my God. He's in Supercross, not outdoors, I don't feel that way. Not as bad in outdoors, but you you know how you, you, you a rider kind of, you, you kind of get who they are? Yeah. I'm still figuring out Lawrence because I feel like every once in a while he does like a one squirrely thing. But for the most part, it's pretty efficient. Adam definitely right now is riding 100% trying to break the throttle cable at all times and again do you think that is emotional angry riding or is that just like this is the class and this is how he has to ride i mean it's working right now but i just don't see that that doesn't i don't think that's gonna work for 24 you know what i mean i i think it might i mean he's he and he, he's bigger than those other dudes so he can kind of ring it more and get away a little bit more with that aggressive style riding hanging off the back because he can make up for it with his size where a little guy like Cooper, he's gonna get bounced around a little bit yeah more. i mean he could do it once or twice but he can't do it the whole moto and even even but I will say, watching Cincerillo ride the way he did the first five laps, I'm like, there's no way. He can't maintain this, but he did. Yeah, he does, and then gets the overall, which was good. He was pumped again um, to get that overall. First moto, he w- I wouldn't say it wasn't impressive. It was, but he also had a harder time with Hampshire and Nichols and that group that he was in. He wasn't, he wasn't as good as he was in the second moto. And again, that's something that he might need to figure out is make his first motos a little bit more aggressive. Because even Hangtown first moto, he wasn't too aggressive. He was... Almost kind of settled it. It's it's funny. It's, I like the dynamic that's forming, but at the same time, I love that they have these guys that aren't going to be in the points chase. RJ gets the DNF, so he screws himself on points. Lawrence had the DNF, screws himself. These guys are not in the points, which means they're going to treat every moto like it's just a moto to go and be a hero, and that's what's going to make this series fun. It's like a lot of guys that are looking for hero motos, not necessarily hero overalls or hero championships, individual motos, whichever guy gets up there. Like Jordan Smith was going for it in the first moto and obviously it didn't work past three laps but the 250 class has got me on the edge of the seat heart rates up because i feel like every guy is just psychotic and well and and the other guy that was up in there in the mix you you didn't mention was uh chase sexton dude he was on it in that second moto and as soon as he saw adam go around him on that single it's like he went, oh, Adam's going crazy. I can go crazy. And right. just started pinning it. And yeah. he's, But he's got such a tight style, you can really tell when he's hanging it. Yeah, because he is so fundamental. When he is riding a little wild, you're like, wow, okay, Chase. Because he's not normally like that. He's pretty methodical. Uh, Joe, the first moto, the very end there, I, I thought that was maybe the best two laps of the day with, uh, let's see, Nichols, Hampshire, Adam, and then Chase was right there. And then they caught Cooper. So it literally was like one, two, three, four, five across the finish line. And I just put my hands in the air and was just like, this all summer. I want I want this all summer. And I think this class is gonna give it, dude. They're they're all too all over the place. And and again, as good as Adam and Cooper are riding, they're a tick better than the rest of the guys. So moto by moto, it's gonna be I I think it's gonna be a shit show, and I think that's that's what I want. Stacked all year, barring any freak, you know, stupidity injury wise. But yeah, it's gonna be Great. Yeah. What and what about Cooksey? Once we get out of the California rounds, because you remember these are California rounds are a lot different. Um, I think when we get to the East Coast, some riders might be exposed for not being at that level, and some might break away. You know what I mean? Once you get past Colorado, it gets a lot stickier, a lot more humid. These guys are riding on hard packed, choppy California tracks in seventy degree weather. That's this isn't really it yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I still think there's 10, 12 dudes that can get up there and win a moto. Some of the younger guys, yes. The older dudes that have a contract for next year, they may mail it in a little bit. But for the most part, I don't I don't see it. You know, 
a lot of times you get a few races in and the guys figure out where they are and if he's behind in points they don't send it and if they're close you kind of find out where your role is i think that's going to happen a little bit but i don't know man these guys really really want to be up there and there's yeah. not yeah I, I don't know it's good it, it looks to me though at least on track a lot of geico bikes a lot of star yamaha bikes and then ac the huskies are nowhere to be found uh, the KTMs are poking their head up there for a second, and then that's not working out at all. We'll get into that probably at some point. Uh, <laughs> but it looks like a lot of red and blue, and Adam. Does you know who's, like you know you? Who's, well, yeah, but you know who's going to get in there is Mo Mosman, Michael Mosman. He looks really good. Yeah. He had some issues. I don't know what happened to him. He looked fast all day, though. He can get up there and, and run the pace with those guys. Yeah, well, I, but that's but that's new to him. You know what I mean? I still feel like he's not lead speed. He's no, I think he's top five. Really? I see him seven to ten i don't i don't dude watch him he'll get a start one of these times and he'll be up there and i think he could easily i think he could hang on for the whole moto i don't know what his specialty as far as tracks are because I, I don't know him that well mm, they might be what you've seen he's a norcal guy i mean he's from maybe 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 he's I'm from this then. area so maybe wrong, he's maybe. a he's more of a, i think i i don't I like what i see with him it, it's hard well it's hard to say anything negative about him just if you watch the way his supercross season went and how he started out kind of a factory guy on a factory bike who, man, should this guy even be on this team? Does he deserve it? To a guy at the end who is literally stuffing Cincerello for the lead and looking normal. with I mean, he turned it around. So, I, again, it's a good start for him. I just, I don't know if he's got 30 raw minutes of speed well, yet. Watching him in practice, he gets in there and mixes it up with the big boys. He feels like he belongs. Whereas you see like Jordan Bailey, he still like realizes, he kind of knows his role. Yeah. Mosman wants to be there. He wants to be one of those. Yeah, he, he looks like he's willing yes. to go wild. You know what I mean? Yep. That that makes sense. Yeah. He, he Bailey, I never seen him make a mistake because he's. It's almost like he's not willing to let himself go that way. Mosman is. He's definitely turned it up in speed. It's been a. It's been physically a little rough on him when you start going that fast to a new level. Like even Supercross, he was crunching himself a bit. But at least it looks like he's willing. And from what I understand, I think they're pretty happy with him. And he's found, you know, some of these younger kids, you never know, like, man, are the teams going to keep him or not? Are they going to send him on their way? I think he's moved past that. I'm pretty sure the team is like, dude. He oh, yeah, we're right. good. No, no, no. And I think he is. I, I think that they have, he's turned the page enough to where it's like, you are no longer a young kid that we're wondering about. You are solidified as a guy we want long term. So that's, that's what I understand. So if you're Bobby Hewitt, what about Jordan Bailey? He's got a really good style. I think they need two or three years. I think it's stupid to put him on there for one year. What, what do you do with him? Do you get rid of him? Do you keep him? What do you do? What do I do? Yeah. It's your money. I. Yeah, play team manager. We like to play let's that go sometimes. Team um, Bobby, what are you doing? I I, I don't know. because I, I, I'll, I, here's, I'll, And here's <laughs> what why. A, what a big. Is that I, what the contract says? I'm not sure. Yeah. No, it does. Okay, here's why. Here's what happens in amateurs. These teams have all of a sudden all gotten all frisky with signing kids when they're one year old, right? That's, that's frisky, the thing. I'll call it stupidity. Oh, it is stupid. <laughs> it is stupid. It's like, here's what happens. Team Green runs everything in amateurs, and all of a sudden now Yamaha's getting involved, Honda's getting, they all, you know, a few years back, they all got involved. Well, how do we get involved? Let's go and find a 12 year old that looks like he's got talent. Oh, he's winning Loretta's. Let's go hire that kid and give him a full factory deal. Now, now here's what happens. Now you give this kid full factory stuff for the rest of his amateur career, which means he's going to beat everybody. He's got more resources. The families are all in. Of course he's going to be good on amateurs. And then they go into the pros, and they have like a one to a one and a half year deal, and they get swallowed up because now they go and race against other pros that have good programs, and they're really not that good because they've been babied for the last five years. And they need a year or two to figure out what it's really like. And the problem is their contracts run out, and the teams go, man, we need results, and this guy's not giving it to us. Let's send him on his way. Mosman's a prime example. Mosman barely got his deal this year. He, they were going to let him go too. They said, mm, there's not really anyone out there. All right, let's give him another shot. It pays off. So if you're Bobby Hewitt, do you do the same thing with Bailey and go, hey, Bailey will be our new Mosman. He just needs more time. Or is he more like a Kentrell who it actually just gets worse because he really doesn't deserve the spot on there. You know what I mean? If you thought enough of him to give him a factory ride, Give him three years. To yeah, develop. but the problem is you gave him a factory ride when he was fourteen years old, and now he's a man, and he's racing against men, and he's not really that good. I'm so. sorry, Mr. Hewitt, that's your fault. Keep oh, I know. I, <laughs> I know it is, and that's what I'm saying. Is what do you do? Do you do you double down on your mistake, or do you go, man? I got to stop doing that, and I, I, sorry, I got to let this one go because he doesn't have it. You know what I mean? I hey, did you did you see the article I did last year about the amateurs and how 
I compared it to baseball. So you got the Little League World Series. You got thousands of kids, thousands and thousands of kids that played the Little League World Series at like 12 years old. Right. How many do you think went pro? Jeez. Like I'm 25 in. out of those thousands. Right. And none of them were superstars. Well, that's more than I thought there would be. Yeah. I'm, so I'm, what I'm that tells me surprised. is talent develops after puberty. And these guys are signing them pre-puberty. Are you kidding me? We no, talk about all the. No, I, we talk about dude, that a you lot. Have no with idea. Evan. I am so unbelievable. Uh, I'm, no, was, I've heard that I, was I, almost a new word right there. <laughs> I am so disgusted with the way the teams do the amateur program. It is. Guess what? It works with Forkner and Sexton, and then all the other ones. It does, like it's one out of ten that it works. One out of ten? I'd say one out of a hundred. No, you're the ACs of the world, the Forkners of the world. The, but how many other? I, I truly think there's been about a hundred of the other guys. Go to the amateurs and see how many kids have support right now. Oh, I know. I, but what I'm saying is the ones that get the factory deals that it's built into their pro contract. Because that's what happens. Dude, goes back to Alex Fry, Sean Cantrell, Mitchell Falk, Derek Drake. These guys are signed amateurs and their deal goes into the pros. They are already have their pro contract signed when they are 13 years old. It it's built into their first year of the pros, and then you go and for five years you give these kids the best equipment in the world, so they beat all the other talented kids because their equipment's better, and then they get eaten alive when they turn pros. And then what do you what do you do? Do you again? Mosman is like he's rare that he survived the the rookie contract, gave him another one, and it's turning around. And I. Again, I give Bobby Hewitt credit for sticking with him, but do you do it again? Is that your new mo- model? Is you do it again? Or do you, again, you, do my, you my look at model? guys like Hayes and Hartraft who are out there, and I don't even want to get into that. Well, my new model is I sit back as team manager and I go, oh, hey, you guys just developed him for two years. He looks close. I'll take him for nothing. Well, Star Yamaha is the kings of poaching. Good. They steal the guys when it's time. Well, I heard they store, they stole one before it's time, I heard. Uh, well, they just did that because again, well, they're aggressive. They have the money. They got the program. And the other, fry, are you talking about the other fry kid, this new yes. one, who I apparently again let Suzuki develop him forever or wherever he was. What was he on? I, don't, I think he was on I Suzuki. Think it was Suzuki. Yeah, let them pay the money and develop him as a kid. Oh wow, you're 16, 17 years old. You look pretty damn good. Stolen. But dude, if you're the parent and these guys come to you and your whole family is going to rake in three hundred thousand a year to be an amateur, are you going to take it? Of course. Like uh, it's a bad system that is really bad for the writer long term. So how how do we fix the system? Where do we start at? Who, who just talk who shit on hell? all the manufacturers for what they're doing and expose them for how dumb their amateur program is. I I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I, I honestly, you know what I do? Two things. Number 1, kid cannot race amateur nationals unless he has a report card from a uh, physical school. That's number 1 to me. Oh, no boy, home trouble school. with the liberals now. <laughs> I, I don't an I'll, actual school not home where their nope. mom takes the test for him yep no, no? I, I okay. think if you're not in school you should not be allowed to race number one number two I don't think any amateur should be allowed to have factory support I think you should funnel it through a dealership and you can get dealership support where they give you some bikes and a parts budget whatever but the fact that Red Preach Bull on, and Monster and these manufacturers are actually I mean these kids are making a living when they're children and they're not in school so that they can go turn pro and get chewed up I, it's just an ignorant, stupid system, and I, I hope it corrects itself. That's all I have to say. The problem is, you know why it's not going to correct itself? Because there's some freak show amateurs coming up over the next five years, and they're all going to be really good. I'll tell you right now, I can name five of them right now that it's going to work. Every they're, time I go riding, I hear from the parents that their kid is that freak show. Yeah, well, of course, every carrot <laughs> thinks that. How, every, Joe, uh, how many parents right now? How many parents right now? And I've said this on the show before. The worst thing you could possibly ever be is 10th place in the intermediate class. Because you're pretty damn awesome. Yeah. But you're not going to make it. Like 99% you're not going to make it. So it's like, it's such a stupid system, but I think you make some hard rules. I think the AMA should get involved and say, you are not racing Monster Cup, which is now an AMA national championship for Supercross, or Loretta Lynn's unless you go to school. You know, Evan, to race KTM Junior, had to show his report card. You you had, he had a birth certificate, support uh, report card, all that, just to be approved. You shouldn't, the amateurs should not be allowed to race if they're not in school. It's yeah, I'm bullshit. okay with that. The problem is that what that won't happen is because I mean, who defines what is school these days? It's pretty, it's shaky out there, man. I, well, I can't believe how many kids in my neighborhood that I see. I'm like, hey, you're not at my daughter's school. Oh, I'm homeschooled. I'm like, are you kidding me? Well, 12 no years old, you're, living no in you're so dumb. <laughs> let's, say, let's say living at MTF and living in a motorhome when you're 11 <laughs> is it's absolute BS. And again, there, there's a lot of things that need to be cleaned up. But for me, it's 
hoping the manufacturers learn from their mistakes, but I'm telling you right now, they're not going to yeah. because Nate Thrasher is coming up next. Or I'm sorry, Pierce Brown, Jalex Swole, Nate Thrasher, Max Volan, Jet Reynolds, Ryder DeFrancesco, Daxton Bennett, Hayden Deegan. There are a lot of amateurs coming that the manufacturers are going to grab. Seth Hammaker. The, yeah, Seth Hammock, well. But he he wasn't always in the system. He worked his way into the system late. He's kind of the you know, He's going to have, well, He's. I don't think his road's going to be the easiest either. It's, it's. I think he's good. I think, I think he's, he's good too, but it doesn't, it, greatness rises. Out of all those names Goodness said, does okay. In my opinion, Max Voland is the only one that's going to be a superstar, possibly Hammaker. That's my prediction. Mm, I don't know enough about Hammaker to agree or disagree. I, I saw Max Volan last night talk to Talon and Tyson and he could win right now. Uh, yeah, and dude, I'm sorry. It, I've 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 dealt with enough of the parents to know the dumb ones and the smart ones. Yes. Talent's so damn smart. Like what he's doing with Max is so it is Except so for he always forgets my name every time I see him. <laughs> well, that's a separate that's a separate topic. But as far as the what he's doing with his kid, literally and Talent's helping me with my program. I mine will be a little bit different than his just because they they were definitely pretty aggressive young as far as the program, but at the same time he has done things very Against the manufacturer, a way, uh, uh, probably a pain in the ass for the manufacturer a little bit because Talon does it his way. And I'm telling you right now, I've I've heard, I've talked to enough factory teams, I've talked to enough parents. I don't think anyone touches the Volan program. They're they're the best, and what they're doing with Max is whatever. But my point is, is the manufacturers aren't going to learn um, because they'll hit every once in a while. You know what I mean? TLD yeah. KTM, dude, they have done a, they've had a rough go. Look at the la- look at Kentrell and Falk and Drake's Drake's that's we'll find out. Problem is they got Pierce Brown coming. Pierce Brown's pretty damn awesome. And he's gonna re confirm to them, oh, the program works. Let's go let's go find some more. And it only it only works because they're all doing it. So they're competing with themselves and they're cutting out so much talent that could. Right. But th- but then again, it's it's just silly. I mean, even when Cantrell got picked up, it was because Forkner and Sexton got picked up, and they were pretty legit. And he's the next best guy. Let's get him. He let's. We need somebody. And then where TLD was killed, it was they took Jordan Smith, let Geico develop Jordan Smith, and then right when he's in his prime, boom, steal him. Like that's all. I mean, if I'm a manufacturer, if I'm a team manager, that's what I'm doing. I'm literally stealing the right guys at the right time and let other people pay for him to, to mature and develop. That's Star Yamaha. Go get Ferranis when the timing is right. Yeah. Justin Cooper, go and steal him right at the last second after he's done going to high school all the way through and going to college and develops and turns pro at 19 and not 15. Like, Colt Nichols, let's go steal him when the time is right. Literally, hey, star hey, Yamaha. Complete, complete side note. Damn, did he look good out there yesterday. Yeah, he's officially an outdoor guy now, right? I mean. He's been that way for a while. He's always been hurt. Because I remember a couple of years ago, we had third at Bud's Creek, I think. And he, he's he's shown some speed, but you can't come into outdoors hurt every year and get away with it. You can kind of get away with it in Supercross. Colt's having a, a very overall good night, 2019. Red, uh, red plate, won a race, won some heats. I mean, dude, he. Yeah, and now outdoor result. I mean, he he is, and I've said this before. I'll say it again. If you're a guy like him, where I think you still are a little bit more of a supercross specialist, a little. Let's go sixty forty. A super good outdoor season will help him be a more legit title contender next year in indoor because you're coming off of something. You know what I mean? He needs to have a good outdoor so that next year's supercross is built with some momentum and not coming back from injury all the damn time. Yeah, which leads me into why Adam should go to the 450. Do you really want to have to face all these guys and possibly lose? Oh, that, but I believe it's done, right? Yeah, it's done. It's uh, done and, and the Cowie 450. Uh, yeah, Cowie 450, and that's done. The, the, we'll get to the 450 class because there's some silly stuff going on in with Honda right now. Honda Ooh. is playing a very smart game right now. They're, it's a race to the bottom for contracts. When you got three or four really talented guys that are all worthy of a spot, yeah. Who wants to ride for cheaper? Ken's our guy. Who we need a second guy. Which one is going to be the cheapest? From what I understand, is a little bit of a, a little bit of a battle between some riders right now, and who can race to the bottom the quickest on salary. And Honda's going to wait it out. There's no rush, but we'll get to that. Joe, let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk 450. But yeah, now I'm all mad because we talked amateur stuff, and that Sorry pisses that, me Daniel. off every single time. So let's uh, let's take a break. We'll come back and do 450. Main event motor. Let's be real. Kids and adults like things that taste good. What if you had a food that tasted unreal and was healthy? Dad, get me some Nature's Bakery. What flavor, Evan? Uh, any, duh. Seriously, my kid is a pain when it comes to track snacks, but since we started eating Nature's Bakery, it's gotten a lot easier. But Dad, don't you always call Mom a track snack? That's not what I mean, Evan. Make sure you eat Nature's Bakery when you're at the track. 
main event moto podcast. Oh, we. I gotta say, the fig bar by Nature's Bakery, it's a lifesaver, Joe. Yesterday, we were at the so races, good. Riverfront Rep Racing. The snack bar there had a weird menu, like, like they were trying to be way too creative, and Evan was super hungry. Oh, I'm starving. He's whining and crying. And then they had this burger that had peanut butter on it. So when my wife sees peanut butter on the menu, she knows right then and there, like, well, he's not eating. He's allergic to peanuts, like the bad one, like anaphylactic. Like, I mean, we had to rush him to the hospital a couple times. So when we saw peanut butter on the menu, we're like, uh-oh, Evan can't eat anything. But luckily, at a track snack box full of fig bars from Nature's Bakery, saved mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. What's up? day. Talk about all this Nature's Bakery, and I'm hungry, and you pick me up, nothing? <laughs> uh, What's up, dude? That sounds good. Uh, I, I know. I apologize. There actually is a, a can of peanuts right in front of you. You can eat that. I don't want that after what you just described. Here's an eight. Well, you, do you have a peanut allergy? No. Then you're fine. Here's an 805. Let's see. I want this. <laughs> yeah, get that 805, Daddy. Uh, is it cold enough? Cold enough. Do you got to open Yeah, it? I could open you up. Open me up one. I, might as well, right? Cooksy, eat some of those peanuts. <laughs> hey, what's up with you and Debo? You guys, you all good? Yeah, I don't Debo, like. I don't like. Dude, I don't you like. Know what? You, I don't like you beefing with my guy. I'm not beefing. Debo was beefing with me. I was like, I was confused as to what he was mad about. I think he's actually mad at you. But you guys are boys, so we come at me. He'd never say anything mean. Well, to me. I, I me used and, me I and used, Denny are like. I'm doing the fingers together. What what do you call this? Uh, scissor. Uh, I think you call that uh, the fingers together, like be ho- it's homosexuality. Like, something like that. No. no, me and Debo are tight. Tight, it's like, like a, a couple tiger. snakes going yeah. at it. Yeah, we're tight. So um, yeah, I saw you guys uh, getting a little. Sa- well, I saw his Instagram, and he got sassy with you, and I'm like, what the hell? Had, and then I saw what it was about, and I was like, uh oh. I had no idea. I, I thought when I first saw his compliment, I, or, I, or I thought it was a compliment. I was like, he was like, because I tried something stupid. I did a little satire. I got a little funny with it off of jokes that other people do. Yeah, you got a little aggressive in that Instagram post. Use some. Some funny terms that may, yeah, may or may not. Yeah, listeners know about UPS. You know about Levi. I threw a little stuff, some inside jokes in there just to see how it would go, just for fun. Eh, I like to do dumb stuff. Well, it's awesome. Debo didn't appreciate it. He said it was unoriginal, and I was a bad journalist, and it was a punk move, and I was a clown. Well, I'm like, huh, does he do satire? And I was really confused. So I responded. I'm like, maybe he did a satire just like that. So I responded to him like, what episode was it? And then he took that as, I don't well, listen well, okay, to anything he does. Hold on, just a backstory so people understand. You did an Instagram post, making fun of Eli a little bit, right? And calling No, him, I was making fun of Levi. Which, again... I said, I said I, he wasn't... I, I said Levi won't be at the Colorado or the uh, the Paula Round because he allegedly killed a guy with his buddy Brick a couple years ago. Okay, <laughs> right. So, he, so Joe, Cooksey brings up Levi and Alito is... Is that so Pol- the, the who, alter who ego started, who started the Alito Denny, thing? Denny so started Denny did a that. few okay. years ago, and he's always referred to Alito as a ha- twin brother, much like you guys do with Levi. Oh, I didn't even know he did that, but I know Denny hates Eli bad, so... I, I, I don't want to be mean, but it's not that origi- unoriginal. Everyone has said there's some sort of an alter ego, and I've heard multiple people talk about it. I didn't think it was... I didn't think I had to check with Debo first. Man, so I when I, I, so when now, I made so up Levi, did I You did totally I jacked his stuff, so oh, I, I was I trying to... Uh, yeah, so that was what it was all about. We squashed it. We talked about it. I told him from now on, I will no longer use Levi. It is now Elito, just so you know. It's Elito. Okay. And that's Denny's. Denny, right. Denny we're good, man. All right. Well, good, because I'm, I'm just glad you're good, because if not, I would have to remove you from the back cave. Me and Denny go back. We've been partying oh. since I was 12. He did threaten to fight me at one point. For real? Like physical altercation? He implied that we we're going to have a meeting face-to-face, and I said, Ooh. well, dude, I don't want to beat up Denny. Oh, my God. Gosh. Don't like Denny's awesome. I don't want like you I don't want to have I to, almost, dude. I almost killed him in '97 when I was racing arena cross before I went to college. When him and Buddy would lap me, I lost it in the whoops. Shot my bike across. He's hitting the catapult, and my bike just. Nope. He probably don't remember it, but if it nope. would hit him, it would. He been, does it remember, huh? Badly. Joe. That's Ooh. where it all comes from. It is. He probably maybe he does. Yeah. Maybe he does. No, it was so a complete accident. I was uh, I was a ring bearer in Buddy Antonez's wedding, and Denny was the best man, and I partied with Denny when I was twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm I, sure. I mean, there's a lot. They, of what did, what did you do? What was the party? What shots? <laughs> He's with Denny. Uh, you know, we could have gone along. We were gone a lot. Of what ways. were you taking shots of at twelve with this guy? Uh, I think it was like milk, probably, or maybe some orange <laughs> juice. Hold, hold the vodka. Uh, but no, I'm just uh, again. I saw the beef. I'm glad it's all good. Um, and again, all over making Dude. fun of Eli. Eli's probably like, you guys are all fighting over talking shit about me. <laughs> 
dude. No, you know, I like I like Denny. Denny's one of the guys that will actually say what he thinks. And I, 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 I have one hundred percent respect. He'll say what he thinks, and it, he'll also come at you and say he's sorry when he's wrong. Yeah. All right. Well, um, let's talk about uh, Levi Tomac then, because Levi will not be making. Sorry, it's Elito. Elito Tomac will not be making uh, an appearance. I don't think in Colorado. So, are you a little bit scared? Again, on camera, on screen, I love the battle. And what Eli did in that first moto was incredible. But he's won three of the four motos. I feel he's going to smash them in Colorado. Is he going to be five wins out of six after Colorado with a nice little points lead? Or possibly. But Elito will make some appearances this summer. Of course Absolutely. he will. I mean, I, I, yeah, there's no way that Elito does. is Even in retired. the outdoors. Even in the outdoors he does. Elito shows up. But Eli, the real guy, was pretty incredible yesterday, man. Uh, that first moto just went on a late race. It's like as soon as he saw them all in the same straightaway, it's like he was like, well, you're all done. And then the second moto just outmanned. Dude, that track was so beat in the second moto, he just outmanned him. I was I was standing in the middle, and I was with my brother-in-law, who doesn't watch a lot of racing, but he was watching it, and he sees Eli. It's about the seven-minute-to-go mark. We hear uh, Kevin Kelly's the trackside announcer at that point. He goes, I don't know what's wrong with Eli. I, he just doesn't even look like the same guy he as did last it. year. And I swear to God, he it almost it. like Eli heard that and just... Huh? Oh, that's what's can you up? Imagine he's and got, he just hey, drops the hammer. Can you imagine he's got in-race communications, Joe, to the announcer's tower? And as soon as they talk crap on him, he's like, oh, what? Dude, Watch that's what this. it looked like. That's exactly what it looked like. And I look at my brother-in-law, and I, I, I could see his body language change. And I go, he's going to win by 10 seconds. It's crazy. But, and he looks at me like I'm an idiot. But I'm that's like, what happened last year. He did that five or six times where he just waited, just waited, just waited. And then five minutes to go, switch, gone. And... I, I, and he looks like AC, AC's entire moto. Yeah, exactly. AC's in shape, man, for riding the way he does a whole moto. But, you know, there's, there's been this big talk about the bike and his small window and will, you know, whatever. I think we've beaten it to window. death. We've beaten it to, you know what he said about that. I mean, yes, I did. Whatever. I heard that. He, I also just, you've heard my theory about the yips and. Dude, uh, we've beaten it to death. Bottom line is, is when Eli decides that he wants to go all in, he's not really touchable. Um, and the big question is, is can he have the self-control in the first 15 to 20 minutes of a moto to get through it without pulling an Alito so he can <laughs> go into psycho crazy ET mode in the last five to 10 minutes? He did it again. And he literally blitzed through them at the end. Like, I mean, it was just like one. T- I mean, he got two of them in like three corners and it was over. I mean, yeah, that's not that's not beatable in that moto a- by moto. That's not beatable. He When he does that, he's better. He's faster than everybody when he does that. Yeah. A lot of that, though, had to do with rocks and kind of fading roxon clearly isn't i thought there was a chance that maybe this whole illness was gone it's not i mean you could see it his lap times dropped right he was doing two two twelves two thirteens towards the end and i knew they were going to get him uh it just yeah that's that's a lot of it so i don't think it's necessarily eli just hammering down he can hammer those other guys he can't do that to roxon when roxon's good right well, and again and when roxon's feisty in the early parts it, it's it's a similar thing with the Cooper first moto, Cincerello second moto thing. In the 450 class, it's Roxon early moto, Tomac late moto. And in the beginning, Roxon is so damn efficient and good and makes his moves. and does the, the first 15 minutes, he's flawless. But then again, he starts, he doesn't look as fresh. He kind of drags on the bike a little. You could tell like he was having to work really hard to keep it going the second half of the moto. Or the first moto, he could literally do no wrong. Problem is, the motos are 35 minutes. That's not changing. And I realistically, on track, he's the only one that I've seen that I think can go the distance with Eli, and I don't think he can go the distance. That's the thing. You know what I mean? Physically, I don't think he can go the distance. If that distance was 15 minutes, absolutely. Yeah. It's not. It's in 30. a sprint mode, go 20, and I think Kenny might have him, because Eli takes a while to get going. Kenny's really good early, but the problem is it's nothing's changing. It's going to be 35-minute motos, and as long as Eli doesn't screw himself out of the picture in the first half... He'll find a new gear and blow by all of them in the end when they're all surviving. It's just it, it. He did it last year a bunch of times. He's doing it again now, and that's that could make things maybe boring. It wasn't it wasn't quite as impressive as last year. He dropped two seconds a lap. He didn't drop four or five. So was it Millville last year? One of them last year. I think it was Glenn Millville. Helen. Did I tell you? Uh, so I'm at Glenn Helen. I'm watching the race. There's two laps left. Anderson's way out there. He's got him by like five seconds. I checked the right, lap time. Right. I'm, I'm a big lap time watcher. I'm like, okay, he's not going to catch him. So I go over, miss the finish. I'm in the press conference. 
I didn't even know until I got home and rewatched it that Anderson didn't win the moto. I'm like, are you shitting me? Yeah, he did that to me. You bleeped that, Joe? Sorry about that. I'm trying to swear. <laughs> no. I swear what a lot. What do you say? You swear all you I want. I said, are you shitting me? You don't you worry say about that. that. Okay. It's, but I, it's the word I'm f- that gets whoa, bleeped. Whoa, buddy. Joe. Sorry. Yeah, well, I, that one's not getting I'll bleeped. I'll try not it to say better f- I know. My oh, bad. my God. There it goes. For the but, children. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't ask a question in that press conference. Hey, how how do you feel to win? And Jason, yeah, that would have looked dumb. Oh my god, that would have been awesome if you would have said that. Jason would be like, "What?" Yeah, that would be like my dungy question back in the day. Hey, Ooh. at the press. Speaking of press, whoa, 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 whoa. what dungy question? The one that went viral that he yelled at everybody. That was me. Oh, the the crown, right? There was no crown. That he was pointed awesome. at me and that snapped. Made, yeah, he got. Oh, boy. Yeah, we know about that. You're famous for that one. Yeah, that's, that's why I, I wasn't even doing one. me. I was just screwing around and just I worked my the guys that own Thumper Talk are my buddies. I'm like, yeah, I'll just cover a couple of races. And then that one went viral, and people are yelling at me. I got to call from people, and I'm like, well, if I'm going to get this much shit, I might as well do it for real and just be a media guy. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Just don't turn into Jim Acosta, and we'll be fine. Who's that? Uh, <laughs> Stop just, it. Uh, We're not, just, we don't do politics yeah, on this I know. Show. It's, it, it has no, that has nothing to do with politics. I'm sorry. <laughs> that guy is grade A level idiot. It doesn't matter what side you're on. I, what do you do, Alex Jones? <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a staunch and aggressive independent and I will hammer both sides when they're dumb. And that guy is a complete piece of shit. Just, just don't turn into Jim Acosta. That's hey, you want say. a funny follow? Go, go to my check out my old man's Facebook. You want to talk about a Democrat? I'm not responsible for whatever he does or says. Just so you know, <laughs> love him. But who's no. this? My dad. Oh, okay. Uh, we <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't we don't I think go, everybody's it's dad. It's pretty funny though. Don't know. He's <laughs> full on like. He's a little, uh, he's a little out there in the uh, Democratic side. No, I am, I am. Uh, he doesn't like, he doesn't like Trump at all. Yeah, I, I am independent. I, I literally judge everything individually. I don't, I don't pick sides. Um, I pick issues. Unlike Joe, Joe is just <laughs> flaming socialist. It's not, yeah, forget the, forget the issues. It's just all about the sides. Joe thinks you, you so- want Daniel's money to go to everybody. Absolutely, yeah, Joe, I want Joe, Daniel's money to go to everybody. Joe thinks that socialist. But I keep my money though. Everybody else's money gets spread around. <laughs> oh, so you're I, a full hypocrite. Mine, yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, anyways, back to dirt bikes before everyone shuts the podcast off. Um, Marvin was pretty good the second moto and then the first moto. Um, I think he'll get better, but we were kind of talking during our own little commercial break. Marvin's Marvin, and, and I don't... I I think that he is exactly who he is, which is a first place guy some days, but mostly a second to fourth place guy, and that's awesome, but at the same time, you can't... I, 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 just, I I've never seen enough to think that he can get over the hump and become like the top dog. He just can't. Even even Weijin Langston said something on that. Like he's just not aggressive enough to ever take it. You know what I mean? He'll when it comes to him and the track's right and everything's good, he's got it. But more times than not, he's just really good. And to win in this sport, you have to be great. And he doesn't really have great moments. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like here or there, but I'm not gonna, enough of them. I'm going to use a basketball analogy. He is the best sixth man. Oh, like my god! He gosh. comes off the bench. He's he's a guy, he's always going to be the number two. He's going to win races. So he's Jamal Crawford. I'm not sure who that is. Joe, but he's Joe gonna knows who that okay. is. I just, anyway, he's going to win races. He's going to be competitive. But he's going to get along with your other guy. Off the track, he's kind of too nice. He's not going to fist fight. He's not going to throw the bike into there. He's going to do the right things. And it's going to go well. He's the ideal number two because he can win also. Yeah, exactly. He is the best number two you could have because he will get you some wins. But for the most part, he's going to be up on the podium all the time. In fact, let's be fair, right now, two rounds into this thing, he's not the number two on their team. We'll get into Cooper right now. I mean, it's I, I'm not ready to flip the oh switch and boy. say there's a problem yet. Um Oh, you are? Yeah. You can go now? Because I, I think we got to get east before we see that. Cooper is an east coast guy. He's always been more ruddy, uh, ruddy, a uh, rut rider, sorry. Um, I feel like Cooper is trying to get out of these west coast rounds in decent form, and then he's going to come on, come alive. No? No, I, I, I disagree your, with your, that. Your face I, says, seeing, no, your face I don't, screams dude, no. Watching him yesterday, if I closed my eyes or there was a shadow, I'd have thought he was on the Yamaha. Whatever's going really? on with him and that bike, he looks like the same Cooper Webb as last year. It mm. do, I, I'm, he did, I didn't see that in Supercross. In Supercross, it was different. I didn't see it. He just he didn't look comfortable. And those dudes, they, they really owned him. The first moto, I saw some fight. He was going after Anderson. He, he was giving it some. It didn't last very long. Um, but again, I, when I watch a rider, I, I know where a rider is good and great. Eli Tomac, when it is dry and blown out and sandy and kind of de- desert-ish, 
like Glendale or Vegas or Denver, just hard pack, or Paula. He is so special. Uh, you just can't touch a guy on conditions like that. He's just the best. But then Cooper, you know, but Southwick, you, I, I don't Southwick's even know. the same I, I, thing. It's not very ruddy. It's it's Burmy. Yes, it's it's yes, you just you, don't have you to ride be on the, you ride on the back of the bike. You can be your aggression and strength can take over. Cooper was not good uh, on tracks like that. Cooper is very good when it's really sticky and you can kind of point and shoot and take lines, whatever. I, again, if we get through Mount Morris and Florida and Cooper looks like this. I will tell you I'm com- I'm concerned. And I'm not saying concerned for the title, because I am concerned for the title. He is uh, pretty far behind. I'm just saying as a writer in general, I'm not really worried about it until I see him struggle on East Coast stuff, because I didn't think he would be as good early on these types of tracks. It's a little worse than I thought it would be, but I'm not going to freak out yet. But I see, ev- where, I see where you're coming from here. You picked him to win the title. No, I, Joe, I picked Eli to win the title, barely over Webb. So that's why I'm still defending him a little bit. But no, I picked Eli to win. Um, but I, I'm just saying Cooper w- will be better once he gets off the West. I, yeah, he'll, Morris, be, he'll be better. He'll get some podiums. But physically, I didn't see what you're seeing because I didn't. Wa- I wasn't there. But so you're telling me he looks Yamaha-ish. And I watch Anderson, which and- is which is afraid because I think he yes, was terrified he was. of his Yamaha. And again, I only saw him for three laps in the first moto. He looked pretty feisty. It didn't last very long, but I didn't see anything past that. So I don't know. Does he look afraid? That's what I, I don't know that I'd go necessarily. That's kind of a... Just timid. Yes. Yes. Cautious. He looked, he looked cautious okay, on that. Cautious. But then again, it was blowing 18 miles an hour. And maybe that is something that he won't have to deal with back east. Needless to say, my gut tells me that was alarming. It tells me he's not happy. And then with other guys, with three other, four, you know, what, Roxon, Tomac, Marvin, Anderson. and Anderson... And Osborne, Osborne right on his ass. Osborne pass him, beat him. Um, he, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's gonna get. It's not an easy road to get better. He's no, gonna get I, a lot better I, too. I think he is counting on that, and I, I would, I, I, I'm gonna hold out judgment until I see him on a struggle on an East Coast track. Because I, again, I felt like if he was gonna make a run at this championship, it was gonna be similar-ish to when he won his 250 title. He didn't start that year out very good either, but that was because of the wrist, not the track conditions. Remember when he won didn't the 250? Did he win Hangtown with that bad wrist? I don't think so. I think he did. Can you look it up? Because I want to know. Because if I'm wrong, I admit it. But if I'm not wrong, I want to know. Because I, I don't think he did. I, I, If I believe correctly that year, it took him a while to get going. And then once he hit the East, he just locked in and was started lights out everybody. Um, but anyways, yeah, he's definitely not looking good. Um, but how about Anderson looking good? Anderson has had not that much time on the bike. But you know what? The way he rides and how loose and just talented he is. You can see that he is overcoming his a little bit lack of prep because he's not as strong late as I, he is early. I wouldn't know about his prep. He blocked me. I can't check out what he does on Instagram. Ah oh, man, you're just pissing everyone who, who, off. Who, man. who blocked you? Anderson. Did. Oh, Anderson did. no, I talked that's to right. I talked to Kenny Adams, who's tight with him, and I said, "Dude, what did I do?" He didn't seem to know about it, or at least he didn't want to admit he knew about it. And I think it may have been an accident. I don't know, but uh, maybe we'll see if I can get unblocked. But I'm gonna no, text you're, him. you're absolutely right. He he looks good, <laughs> dude. I, I'm up. Well, that's the thing. You know what? I went back through all my stuff to see if I wrote or said anything that, dude. I'm a big Anderson guy. I like Anderson. I love that he's out there. He spices up the series. He's not afraid to piss people yeah, off. You better say that in this studio. This is a pro Are you Anderson. Threatening me? <laughs> yeah, even though you're like four <laughs> feet taller than me, but whatever. Uh, this is an Anderson studio, so I, I'll I'll do what I can. I, I I'm pretty good at mending. Issues. As long as he rides good and doesn't do anything stupid, I won't say anything stupid. See, I like when he does stupid things. He makes it fun. I but, like when, but I'm not going to trash. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to like. It, I'm not going to make up stuff. If he does right. dumb things, then I'm going to call him for okay. it. Okay, so, okay. So you call it as, as it, it is, as, as it should as be. As it should be. So what do you see after four motos? I'm, I'm. He looks close to the best He's I've ever back. seen him in outdoor. He's never been an outdoor guy. He's never. I don't think I've ever seen him look that good on a 450. Looks to me like he's riding with a chip on his shoulder, and that's the best Jason Anderson out there. You know, it's funny. He's I, pissed. I talked to Bobby Hewitt last week uh, a little bit about Anderson too, because I, I obviously when I'm I work, I wouldn't say I work for, but I I you help, run Feld, right? No, I help Jacob Hayes. Hey, Jacob's my buddy. Uh, he's like family to me, and let's just say I'm in communications with all the teams at all times because we're Jacob's. He's on he's on the list for a lot of teams right now for next year. So I call all the teams. I call Bobby Hewitt and talking about Anderson. And you know what he said? He said, Jason is really, really bent on the idea that he's a Supercross only guy. And he really, really wants to prove that that's not the case. And you can tell by the way he's riding. He's not mailing it in this summer and the next year go for Supercross. He's, he's trying really damn hard. And I think it's a combination of one. He probably doesn't like the fact that 
Supercross looked so shitty for him. It did look. It was a bad look. It was because before he got hurt, it everyone was talking about that he was hurt. Yeah, like what the hell? He probably doesn't want Osborne popping up and beating him as a rookie in the semi. I mean, Jason's a prideful dude in a, in a good way where he wants. He's competitive. So you got Anderson coming up. Supercross went bad. People say you're Supercross only. You could tell he's riding with a chip, and that's when he's great. And I, I, other than that day at the Donations, he's looking as good as I've ever seen him on outdoor. He looks awesome. I mean, especially early in the motos. Of course, maybe at the end he runs out a little bit too. But that's gonna that'll fix itself over the next month or so. He didn't have that much time on the bike, but dude, when he is in his full sprint race laps, he looks awesome out there. Like maybe the best I've seen him. Yeah, he, he clearly he. And, all he has to do is be top three, and we're happy with it this year outdoors. I am just excited that 2020 Supercross. Oh, yeah. Webb's running the plate, and he gets to be that. I he know. He's not the. He, and I think that really bothered him at the first of this year when he had that number one plate and everyone was talking to him. You could just tell, like at the first press conference, he didn't look like the Jason Anderson with the swagger. Well, he's ro- his swagger and his style is very. What's the word, Joe? Where you're not. You don't really want to be part of everything. What's it? What's it called? Where you like the attention, but you don't really want to have to face it. You know what I mean? Where you like being the number one guy, you love being the champ, but you really don't want to have to go and do all the things and be that guy and do interviews. It's like it's almost like you want to be respected and liked, but from afar. I feel like that's his kind of. He's not going to be your media darling ever. And guess what? When you're the champ, you have to be a little because everyone wants to talk to you. Everything's about you. That's what it is. I don't think he handled that very well. Plus, he was a little bit injured. His style's a little like get away from me kind of guy. I, it, it was a bad combination all at the same time, and I, I think he's bitter about that. I mean, he's probably embarrassed. He's pretty prideful. I think he's embarrassed, and he probably wants to come out in outdoors and show, like, look, don't don't think those things about me. I will prove otherwise, and two rounds in, he's doing it for me. Yeah, so far, so good, and you can tell, too, whenever Webb gets near him, I Ex- see a little I extra. Yes, you I will, see that too. I, know, that's what I, I, do, see. I do, but I will tell you this: those two are friends, and they respect it each other. No, well, I'm not saying respect, but they want to beat each other. I, I, guys like that are like that, and yeah. I, and I don't care if you're buddies. If you're competitive, and your buddy is the champ now, and getting all the attention, you probably want to beat your buddy. I mean, it's just what it is. You know what I mean? Like, I, I and I think that those two, at least early on, will probably be respectful. That's a whole other conversation once we start focusing on Supercross. It's funny how. I know we're round two in, but I'm already like like you. I'm amped for Supercross next year because it's just everyone's coming back. Plus, you throw AC in there, and you know the relationships there are goofy with him and what. 2020 Supercross can be great, but we'll stay focused on this for now. I'm impressed with Anderson, but I'm with you. Every chance he's around Webb, I feel he's a little extra, like a little extra. You know what I mean? Hey, going along the lines of excited for next year and what's going on with the big picture, did you see that the Daytona – Motorsports Group or Daytona Track was bought by NASCAR, so they own the outdoors that MX Sports leases it from. Do you wait? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, I'm lost. What happened? So Daytona, the raceway, Daytona Motor Speedway, was bought by NASCAR by the series. Yes. Okay. They own MX Sport. MX Sports leases the rights to do outdoors from them. Wait, MX Sports leases the rights to to do outdoors from the DMG Daytona Motorsports Group. What do you mean outdoors? Daytona the race that I went to yesterday. I'm so. What is Daytona? I, I'm lost. Uh, what somehow is Day- in the whole AMA, the deal, the AMA, and all that back in the day when they made the whole switch with the, the promoter battle. Somehow the Daytona Motorsports Group ended up with the rights to the Outdoor Nationals. MX Sports leases that from them. I have. N- I didn't know that. I've, yeah, you, they this do. Is, this is but news to me. I, I was just no curious idea. as I saw that. Okay, okay. But, Never but, mind. We'll but, go but, away from it. I know neither of us seem to know what the hell we're talking. No, about. but to be honest, with outdoors, I really don't. I don't know the dynamic with the Joe, powers. Joe, call Davy Coops. Yeah, yeah, totally. Joe, like, get Davy on the yeah, line no real problem. quick. Hold okay. On. Um, I I don't really know the dynamic. I know the Supercross dynamic obviously because I work for him. So I wonder how that'll affect Daytona though. But from what I understand, I actually I talked to uh, my bosses at least one of them last week, and I know the schedule for next year, twenty twenty, and. I don't think there's an issue with Daytona. So I, 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 what maybe what's going on behind the scenes does it, changes, but I don't think it's going to change the schedule at all. Yeah, I don't know. I was just curious. So clearly, we don't know. We'll get off that one. Yeah, okay, I'm good because I, I say I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Not a, I don't want to guess and get in trouble. Technically, we are partnered with Racer X, who is also sort of involved with MX Sports. With, I mean, gosh, I have the access to find out. I should probably reach out and find out. Yeah, aren't but, you part of the Racer X network? We are now. Which we is are also right. sister or. 
sister brother to MX Sports. Cousins of something. Next and door. And, next door. Yep, of, yep. Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, anyways, back to the 450 class, though. Um, I love it. I love it's top heavy. I love the fact that we got, obviously, Eli's a, a little bit on another level, but guys are giving him some trouble. And I just, I, I'm curious to how this series is going to look, though, in a couple weeks because Eli's really good in Colorado. If he goes 1 1 there, Say Kenny does a two, three, or a three, four, whatever. Eli could be looking at a nice little points lead here in a couple, in a week, and I don't like that. I I, I, I hate this, well, and I apologize, but I'm looking for. I, I'd like an Elito moment to happen here early and put him behind. <laughs> I just I don't want him to run away with it because no matter what the racing is like on the television, the points still always matter to me because that's the that, that's the reality of the big picture. And if Eli gets a big lead, then I'm I, I start to not care as much because. It's not that close. One thing about Eli is he's exciting. If nothing else in this world, every series that he's been a part of since he's been in the 450 class has been interesting. Yeah. He always, he's his own chase format. He's going to do something stupid. That's awesome. And I, he is. And I will tell you this right now. You go to the track and you just talk to people in the pits. Like last night I'm at Riverfront, just talk or whatever. People love Eli Tomac. Man. Oh, we're going to miss him when he retires. I know, and what's crazy, and what's crazy is I'll predict it right now, it's, that's in two years. He just signed a two-year extension with Cowie. Book it. He is done after that. I, that's and I, I I have nothing to go off of other than my own instincts. But I'll tell you right now, he's got two more years and, I, and he'll be gone. That's my guess. I think he hangs around. Mm-mm, I don't think so. And if he does, it won't be at Cowie. I that that again is an instinct. That's just inside info that I have. That I sorry, Joe. I don't share. You know, I know. <laughs> look at him, Joe's already look at looking that. at me. Yeah, he gets mad when I tease things. But dude. We know we've talked about it. I do too when I'm listening. I have I right? have I have access I'm like, to why, why, why bring, I know why even bring me, it up. I know because if I do, then the, my access to the information is no. Gone. You don't have to tell me where you got it, but don't say oh I yeah. know this, but I can't say it. All right. Well, if you do that, then you don't. Say okay. Anything, well, Tomac right? Tomac's yeah, got a absolutely. two year deal left at Kawasaki, and then obviously there's somebody else on a Kawasaki 250 who will go into that position in two years. Just put it that way. What's Justin Hill gonna do? Kill it for me in fantasy. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Joe, I know you picked him too. We both picked Jay Hill. We took the yeah. bait. And people guess were, what? People were laughing. Yeah, people were talking crap to Joe. And Joe's like, dude, you look good. Watch. And he Whatever. did look good. But I, what's and an actual, me, he's and that, clearly trying. Like, you know, he said, oh, I'm going to do it outdoors. <laughs> you can tell when Justin Hill's not trying. He was trying. He I had, thought he looked good. I mean, dude, to let's a be point. Honest. He's on a Suzuki. Yeah, and he's not the best. Uh, he's never been an outdoor killer. Uh, the problem is, is. He was paid and signed to be elite in Supercross, and there was what? What did he get? Top ten once. Um, it's I mean, uh, unfortunately for him in that class, you cannot mess around and still get a deal. There's too many good guys. I'm I'm sorry, but with Wilson and even Bogle, like you just you can't do that. Your talent only takes you so far on a 450 and you're going to lose a ride straight up and he those, won't he won't have a ride next year I don't think those results were I, I, I sometimes that happens with rookies but what's unacceptable is I like showing up overweight and showing up and fading and going four laps in the race and just there's how many people on that team that get ready to have you at that race give you the best chance to do good and you can't even be in shape that's your that's well, your job well and and here's the problem for him is this industry is small enough people hear things from people and it gets out when you are not committed, and I'm sorry, when you're that talented and your results are that bad, here's what, here's what happens. You look at someone that's freak talent, and then you see the results and they're not good, and then you go, huh, let me figure out why this must be. And then you start digging, and then you start finding out that you're not prepared, the effort's not all the way in, you're not that committed. I mean, he even said in that DMXS interview, it's not really that fun anymore. That stuff gets out. And then all of a sudden, it all makes sense, and now you're painted a certain way. And when you're painted a certain way in this sport, it takes a miraculous—is that a word? Yeah. Okay. Sounded weird coming out of my mouth. No, that's good. Um, it takes a miraculous recovery to change the impression you leave on people. And right now, the impression that people have—this isn't just fans; it's teams, it's the industry—is that he's super talented but doesn't give a damn. And that's—and if he does. Then he did a not very good job at selling that because it, that's what it looked like. And it's it's tough, but in that class, you're going to be left without a ride because there are guys that are freaking committed. And they, again, Savachi, love him or not, the dude showed this year he was freaking committed and he made moves and he was he overachieved. And now he's in the conversation on any team that's got an opening. Savachi's probably top of the list because the picture has been painted that the dude gives a damn. And 
In the 450 class, talent doesn't get you far enough. 250 class, you can go all day long off talent. 450 class, you're left without a ride. I look at Justin Hill, and I see Malcolm Stewart a couple years ago. I see a yeah. guy so talented. So what do we do? Tony, please call Justin's agent or wait for him to call you. You can fix him. You fix Malcolm. And I can't wait to see Malcolm. I can't wait. Did you hear Malcolm? I was I was over at Steve's Pulp the last week, and he beat A-Ray in a mountain bike race. Malcolm, already, he's in that good no, shape. No, I know. I, Malcolm has turned the page. Oh. And you know what? I think, too, with, with James officially, sort of officially calling retirement, I guess, kind of. <laughs> I don't even want to get into that. Oh. Whatever. I don't. Let's not even do it. But Malcolm is becoming his own man right now, big time. I think maturity, uh, probably the realization, too, that, look, dude, you're good enough to make some money for yourself, and otherwise you're not going to have... I mean, finances come into play, and sorry, but I know the Stewart family is all pretty connected, but Malcolm wants to do his own thing. He wants to make his own money and leave his own mark, and you can tell that all of a sudden he gives a damn when I know for a fact he didn't before, Yeah, and look how freakishly badass he is. He's clearly noticed that that gravy train has come off the rails. And so he, he also... And thing. you know what else he's clearly noticed? I think he got a taste last year at round one and two yeah. that, oh my God, I am legit. And you know what? If he wouldn't have got hurt, I think he was going to be in the conversation to go the distance. He's he's a champion. To, why are you shaking your head, Joe? I just think, well, because the taste, you think a 250 championship would be enough of a taste to want to keep going? Mm, to your point, yes. But at the same time, when you believe that the, the elitist, highest level of the sport, you could potentially be a winner. As soon as you have that, a little bit of hope, you start working a little bit harder. Yeah, and he's, he was around James. He saw James's glory, and he went, wow, I could do it. And he has done it on the lower level, but when when he's seen it with James and tasted it, the combination. His own. When, he, when yes. he at Anaheim was damn near in position to win, and at Glendale was the fast. I mean, I think he went, oh, my God, I, I can be one of the elites in the 450. I think in the 250, again, his talent just, he, he outdid him with talent. It's it very Josh uh, Justin Hill like it was the exact same thing where dude the dude was so sick and now on the 450 he got a taste of what he, and that's where Justin Hill I'm so confused because at Tampa didn't you get a taste of what you could be god and it, I, well, I'm I'm going to say this with Justin Hill the exact way I say this about the NFL players in the NFL there's a lot of players that get busted for drugs and and, and I'll tell you right now I'll be very upfront about this I think it's BS that these guys get suspended and kicked out of the league for smoking pot it, it's ridiculous but bottom line is rules are rules. And if you're an NFL defensive lineman and you are a freak talent and you can make $50 million if you just put the damn weed down for five years, five years, put the freaking weed down and make your $50 million and then you could smoke weed every day the rest of your life, just have some self-control and you can be worth $50 million. If you're Justin Hill, dude, you don't have to be fully committed for 10 years. Be fully committed for five and go make yourself $10 million because you're talented enough to do it. And then you can do whatever you can do. Music, you can do whatever you want. But God, it's five years, man. I'm 36 years old, turning 37. And if I worked as hard as I do do now in my early 20s, my life would be different right now. And I look back with major regret. And Hill's going to look back with regret because you're giving up. You have so much freaking raw ability. And all you got to do is grind it out for a half a decade, and you are worth so much money for the rest of your life, you're done. Dude, it's joking. half a decade. I think we need to have Daniel smoke some weed. Damn. <laughs> I just, I, 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 I'm passionate about it because, bro, I, my 20s were a joke, and it really it eats me. I, everyone wonders, dude, I can't believe how hard you grind. You got four or five things going at a time. You work nine days a week. Like... Yeah, because I'm freaking bitter, man. I'm extremely bitter at my 20s and my lack of effort and me just chilling and wasting opportunities. And I'm not going to do that anymore. So when I see it being done, I just I, I I would love to tell Justin like, dude, half a decade, and then you could do, then you'll have the best life ever. Five years, commit fully. Like I, I'll tell you right now, if Justin Hill was at the Baker Factory where he was disciplined and not allowed to break, he would be a Supercross champion. Absolutely, he's, he's that dude. Good. He, I believe, sorry, Cooper Webb, don't hate me for this. We're good buddies. But Justin Hill, I think, has more natural ability than you do. And if he had the same discipline, that dude is winning a championship because the skills are there. But I'm sorry, the discipline and the effort are not. And you're going to kick yourself 10 years from now. You're going to kick yourself. He's the modern day Ron Lachine. Lachine was so talented, couldn't get it done. Just, I, Yeah, it, it's brutal. He's, he's going to hate himself later on. No, and this. he is. And that's the thing is he's trying really hard right now and he looks pretty damn good. But I think it's too late. Too little, too late? Yeah. I, 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 here's the thing. With, when a guy like him, though, he shows that talent. 
somebody's going to take a chance on him. Where? Name the rides. Honda's got a spot. Well, he's going to have he's going to have to suck it up and do his own program for a year, buy a bike. He's going to have to it's going to be a really hard road. It's not going to be easy, but he made a lot of money. But, you're going to have to reinvest some of it. Okay, but if you're not willing to put in the work when everything's there for you, are you really to put in the work when nothing's there for you? That's what I'm saying. Go it's, work at Starbucks in the off season and l- l- let me know if you feel like he doesn't it. Have to, how about, all, the, how about that, all these guys like that's the thing with Hill, but that's the thing with Hill is Hill is he's not a flashy spend his money. He's he's dude, he's a mellow dude, chill. He's not out gonna blow his money. You know what I mean? He's probably not even tripping over the money. He's just not I don't think he's like that. I don't he's not like I gotta make another ten mil I gotta make another five million. He's probably like, dude, I've made some pretty good money and He's chilled. He's he's but it, one of the best personalities in the sport. He's yeah. so rad, and that's almost what cost him a little bit. He's laid back, bro. He's chill. He, yeah, and it's frustrating too for guys like you that cover the sport. And I watch. I I love talking to him because he's not afraid to give you stuff. He'll give you no, stuff. He's one He'll of talk the best. I'd say in the top five best personalities in the sport, without question. Yeah, and I think you're so fired up, and I feel the same way. You want these guys to succeed because it make it's better for everybody. Well, especially when the talent is pouring out of his ears, man. It's like. The dude's got skills on a bike that it's, I, I don't know. I, I Again, I, I don't know the personal side, so I don't know exactly what steers him, motivates him, drive. I don't know that stuff. I just watch the talent and go, man, if you were committed like the rest of the guys, they would be screwed. Yeah, and, no doubt. But now, again, because there's a picture that is now painted, he's going to have to start all over and maybe pull Malcolm and maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Maybe maybe when Brayton retires, he goes over there because Tony Lessie's not afraid to take a chance on a guy that just needs a little kickstart. But he and, won't put up with shit either. Oh, I know, but he won't take a guy unless they're willing to work. He took yeah. Malcolm because Malcolm was willing to work, and he has, and he proved it. And well, that's and he why told he's me back that's there. Why, that's why he did. You know, the off, they had the off season contract because it didn't go into the season. He's right. Like, we'll sign you for the off season, and if we like what we see, we'll bring you into the season. Dude, it literally had to get him into uh, it. Whatever, it, whatever you got to do to make him to make him do it, you do. But again, I'm. Yeah, I don't know how hey, we, got, uh, we got derailed a little yeah, right yeah, there. So but at the same time, back to Paula, he did look good. When he was on screen, I was like, damn, all right. And he did kill it for Joe and I's fantasy. So Joe, Knuckles from across the table. Yeah. Thank you, Justin Hill, for coming in huge for us. But what were you going to say? Did you see your boy Bowers with uh, Jake Masterpool? I actually did. And um, I thought it was funny that Bowers needed help. Masterpool helps him. Masterpool literally throws the bike off onto his own bike and then literally shrugs his shoulders like, Oops, you know what I mean? Like he literally hooked Bowers up and then threw the bike onto his own bike, and then was like, "Dude, really?" Um, but I, I think did he see did. That. I think he did take out Bowers to cause that, though. <laughs> oh, I didn't see it happen. I just saw. What, is that what happened? They. I caught the tail end of it, but then I heard Bowers' description of it, and it sounded about right. Like he just hit the back of him, and it just turned into so not that. like a dirty, just like no a oh, racing and, and incident. Overzealous, not necessarily. I, yeah. Dude, that kid is the nicest kid. I, yeah, he's a good kid. I've heard that. I heard that family's pretty cool too. The little one's doing. Uh, Pretty good too. That again, I, I think he's a year early. I don't think he should have came out this year. But no, do you know the rule, right? Where the forty points, as long as he doesn't score forty points. Yeah, but he doesn't go, he have it now? No. Ty hey. should he got? No. Oh, maybe not yet. No, no, no. You're. He's right. got to be close. Yeah, but they're not. I, I heard they're in for the long haul. I, is he? Okay. I, I, I heard that. Um, what's going to be interesting though is the ones that do after Loretta's. That's where that's going to come into play. The Hammockers, the Pierce. Bre- These guys can go race three nationals. Stay under forty points and then pull out. I, and I like that rule, um, sort of. Hammaker's a supercross guy, though. I don't see I know him he is. doing I know. real good he's outdoors. Good yeah, he, I, I expect he's pretty much in next year for one of the coasts. Uh, which I, I don't I know why they don't too. ever advertise that because it's not like it matters. No. When we just talk about them, do previews and stuff. Well, it takes away your ability to preview correctly. But all right, Joe, let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll do listener questions to close this baby down. Main, main, main event moto. Convenience is everything to us in the Batcave, and that's why we rock a key bar and no toil filters. Trust producer Joe, you're sick of that jingle jangle in your pocket. Yes, sir. Just go get a key bar like your bat bros. And if you're not using no toil filters, you probably still have a flip phone. They make one of the worst bike chores easy. Throw the filter in the wash machine with your ladies' panties, and they'll never be cleaner. Get with the program and get a key bar and switch to no toil. Pay attention, Motoheads. I'm a picky SOB, especially when it comes to products on my son's bike. That's why we run Mika bars, sprockets and chains, and a gut seat cover, and it's not even negotiable. Look, if you care about quality and performance on your bike, you'll be running Mika medals and gut seats and covers. And if you don't, 
You're a what, Evan? A noob like Uncle Vincent. I hate to say it, but our NorCal motoheads are pretty spoiled. Why? Well, where do they ride, Joe? Riverfront, East Street, and Prairie City. And don't ask me who takes care of them trackside and during the week, because it's EMT racing. And who takes care of them trackside during the week, Joe? Really, man? I, I, liter- I literally just said EMT racing. Y- you didn't hear me? That's right. If you're from Northern California and support Main Event Moto, then spin your laps at Rep Racing Tracks, buy your bikes and parts from Modesto Honda Cowie KTM, and make sure EMT Racing takes care of your track site and service needs. Spin your laps at Rep Racing Tracks. I see what you did there. I like that. If you're from Northern California and you're a true motohead, then you better get your bike from Honda, Kawasaki, KTM of Modesto. They also got betas, ATVs, and side-by-sides. And if you don't know how to use Google Maps, well then here, I'll help you out. Visit them off of Carpenter Road in Modesto and see their track support parts trailer at all California Central Valley races. Visit www.hkmodesto.com to apply for the rider team, store deals, and upcoming events. And check them out on Instagram at Honda underscore Cowie underscore KTM. Main Event Moto Podcast. Ooh, we Huge shout out to these sponsors that make this show happen. Joe? Huge. Can I get a little emotional right now? Yes, yes. I am yes, sir. so grateful for our listeners. You know why? How, how grateful? Like. Like blowjob grateful? Yeah, no. <laughs> Maybe. Ooh. Uh, no, here's why. We made the transition to Racer X. Yep. And obviously, I know it's not a big deal to subscribe to another podcast channel, whatever, but... It is a big it, deal. It, it actually surprisingly is. There's actually studies out there that say even to like pull out your credit card to buy something online is really like hard for people to do. That's why Amazon's so successful, because they keep your stuff online, and you just it's easy to buy when you don't have to go that extra effort. Well... With podcasting, to go and have to find and search Racer X, yeah. find and go, whatever. It's not the easiest of all things to get people to actually do it. It's weird. You would think it is, but it's not. Yeah. And I just got to tell you guys, I'm grateful and I'm thankful because the numbers from our first two show uh, shows sorry, with Racer X are astronomical. Mushroom cloud. Um, wait, yeah, wait. kaboom. You guys aren't on the same network? <laughs> what do you mean? You haven't listened? Oh, so you're one of those. You're no, one just, of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I would like to thank most listeners, not Cooksey, who obviously didn't make the move to race. What, do you not follow them already? No, I do. I just, we, I ju- we just song. I just, I was like, please don't have the song on your podcast. You know what the problem is? I love that song. I, I, I know it. Joe I loves it. it. You, know, you know why he does that too now? I think he's stubbornly like, look, I can't go back. No. He's in. Yeah. He's, he's, he's pot committed. You got, you got yeah. to double down. But I will tell you this. We get the numbers back from the first two shows and... Wow. Huge. You know, I'll just say is breaking all of our records, breaking all of their records. Um, thank you guys. Yeah. Like huge for, for making the, tr- the move over. And I know a lot of our listeners uh, already probably do because moto people love moto stuff. And obviously Racer X is, dude, Weech puts out good content, good interviews. The one with Savachi was really good. Yeah. I so mean, basically thanks to all the ones who didn't already follow Yeah. Thanks Racer to X. all those who didn't already subscribe to Racer X who have made the move because it's evident in the numbers. Like we... A lot of you made the trip over, and uh, I'm very, very, very thankful for that. So thank you, guys. Um, uh, real quickly, though, I do got to give a shout-out to Pulpamex Fantasy because they are running our league. Are you in our league, or are you? Yeah, I'm in there. How you doing? Oh, no, yeah, we just talked about so we're, we're tied up. Yeah, I just tied talked about so I'm 64th, you 65th. Ooh. How? Wait. Why do you get the one spot? Seniority. I don't know. Just making shit up because I don't want to be out of Joe. Um, no, Joe's 65A, no, Joe, 65B. Joe, so Joe doesn't barely know what he's doing. He literally is just picking his picks off a whim. Um, and based somehow, off the colors, basically. He's 65th in our league out yeah. of 800 and something people. And dude, this week alone, you were in the top 100 on the entire Pulp Mix Fantasy. Yeah, buddy. And you don't even know what the hell you're doing. Bro, we talk moto eight hours a week. I, I you know, I'm starting to learn. I picking it suck. Up. On the other hand, actually, no, I'm in the top 200 in my league. I'm 192nd in my league. I'm going to go ahead and say, I th- just from what I've heard and talked to you, you bet a lot with your heart. All That's going to kill you in fantasy. <laughs> in the words of Rod Tidwell, all heart, mother <laughs> <laughs> All right? Bleep that one? Nope. Okay, good. Thanks. None of your F4s get bleeped, bro. Perfect. Um, fired. 
So anyways, uh, yeah, PubMexFantasy.com. If you're not in the league already, you're out. They locked it. Um, Marks locked the league at round one when the gate dropped. So I've been hit up by a few people. I apologize. You're not in it. You procrastinated and you blew it and you're not in it. But I do want to make this known so everyone listening knows. We, because I'm a chase format love and fool, we are doing our league in a chase format. The first nine rounds are the regular season and after the ninth round, the top 75 in points will be moved into a separate league which will be the chase format main event moto runoff. So the last three rounds is actually the playoff. So if you're 75th, you're going into the finals clean slate. Hey, where's the YZ that I win when I win this? You're not winning a YZ. So here's how it works. Steve is so mad. Steve Mathis is so pissed. Uh, the winner of my league, I am flying you to Monster Cup, paying your airfare, and you get to stay if you'd like. You get to stay and go uh, in the Pulp Studio with me. I'm going to be there for Pulp of Mexico. Because Evan is racing Sunday and Monday, which is the Futures final thingy so i'm gonna stay so monday night after monster cup i'm going in studio and the winner of my league gets to go in and steve said for like a half hour then they have to leave so steve doesn't want everybody just rolling into his house but he was pretty mad that i made that deal before he even approved it but too bad you know him and jt have been having that fight for years jt wanted to do a vip program and steve's like no it's my house yeah well too bad he already agreed it's on air so whatever so uh yeah pop mx fantasy for all the use in the uh in the league Cooksey and Joe are you're in the top seventy five, so right now you're in the running to make the playoffs. I, however, Ooh. I think I'm hundred and ninety second. So getting waxed, but that's what happens when your guys have bike issues. So whatever. I uh, also want to give a huge shout out to Skivy S K V I dot com. Go to Skivy.com, twenty percent off, uh, use the code main event. No toll giveaway. Cooksey, you know what we do. We need a code word. So in honor of you and your uh, wait five years for weed, how about wait number four, weed? <laughs> wait you, for how, weed. Wait, what ha- What? What did I say? You said you needed, you can go ahead and smoke weed, just wait five years. Yeah. If you're like Randy Gregory of the Cowboys and you can so help your wait, team win the Super Bowl and make 50 million. Number just, four, weed. So wait for W-E-I-G-H-T. weed. W-E-I-G-H-T. What? <laughs> right? How do you spell Wait. <laughs> I mean, if you want to weigh it, yeah. yeah. How much does it weigh? You're talking you know ounces, what? pounds. <laughs> yeah. What are we talking right. about? W a i t number four, number four. Weed. W e e d. I'll text that order Ryan right away, and I'm sure I'll get the same response we get every week. So Laughing, Jensen, I said, "What up?" Crying face emoji. Uh, also, go to gutsracing.com. Twenty percent off. Use the code Main Event Moto, and go to keybar.us. Use the code MOTO20. Get yourself a key bar. Are you ready for the Scott Prospect listener questions? Scott Prospect is a good goggle. It is. is. I love that. All the other ones are coming out now with theirs, and they all suck. Well, I happen to know some guys at Scott. There's a new goggle. Dave Janolfi? I don't know. Well, I've met Janolfi. I don't know him really well. I know Primo really well. I know Knowles. (laughs) Janolfi's a complete dirt. He bag. seemed cool to me, so <laughs> no, he's not. maybe that's just the way you talk to him. I don't nope. know. Um, no, he, he's just one of my best friends. Anyway, they're, they're using kind of that that sign of a platform with a little bit lower dollar, and I may or may not have tested it. It's good. Oh, oh, oh! You mean Scott is Scott is so a, a new goggle, a more affordable version of their prospect. Yes. Okay. Well, this. Well, I wouldn't call it that, but it's good. Okay. Well, this is your prospect listener questions. All right. All right, here we go. First one is from Sean 819 Still picking Justin Cooper to win this stacked 250 class. Get the gold app yet? Uh, my mom has the gold app, so I do use hers when I need to, but no, I don't have my own. Joe doesn't have his either because he's cheap. Hold on. Um, what? You're part of the RacerX network and you don't have the gold app? You can't my mom call does. somebody? My mom does. So your mom's <laughs> dedicated? No, she just wanted to watch me on Race Day Live, all Supercross. That's all. My mom watches Race Day Live every week. and Well, if she just wanted to watch you, she could just buy the Supercross series. I don't know what she did. All I know is that she has something and I have her password. And I haven't even used it, like, ever. So I, I, Can you please call Davey and get Davey to give you one? I don't really want it. I don't need it. I don't... I watch... I have Mav TV. It's in HD now. I'm happy about that. And I have DVR. And, I'll text you what happens. And I, I have a five, dude. I have a five S, bro. Like I can't see anything on this phone anyway. So like, what I am I? They to, made the. Yo, and I, they don't and, make these anymore. And I'm not too cheap to get the app. Yeah, you are. I just pay 250 bucks for Direct TV every month. So why would I? No, I, I get that. Would yeah. I get that? But dude, really? <laughs> DB, come on, man. Hey, during Supercross, hey, every time there's that, that whole thing with uh, 
Jordan and uh, Jordan and Hunter. That happened during a commercial break. Oh, no, no. But you would Everything. Know. So there's action. Everything happened during the commercial break. Yes. Uh, Tomax passes to the lead. Commercial break. Uh, what? Uh, some other one happened. And I'm going to get to that. There's a listener question about that, so I'll explain oh, that boy. to you guys. By the app, people. Um, but no, I during Supercross, they actually emailed me my own username and code for the app, and I just deleted the email. I don't I don't need it. I don't I don't need it. I don't I don't. You don't need it. I don't want it. it. I don't and then need you, it. That's, no, that's, not, com- it. that's not completely true. We have talked about getting it here in the cave, and we probably will be. Well, then, Joe, I apologize. Well, he just yeah. had a free code for right, it. Right, I know. He, and he deleted it. it. Yeah, I know. I don't care. And guess what? At that time, I didn't plan on watching into the outdoors, all right? That was way before we merged with Racer X, where I had to care about outdoors. <laughs> Talking merger. Yeah, okay? So before that happened, I didn't plan on watching any don't of the Don't give outdoors. away all the goodies, Dad. All right, sorry. Uh, do I still have Justin Cooper... Who's your pick to win the title? I mean, I'm still with Cooper. Until Cooper all of a sudden sucks, like, I'm, yeah, I, AC looks great, but I just think Cooper's going to... Cooper might win every first moto of the year. He's incredible in the first motos. I, he gets good starts. So he's still my guy until I see otherwise. I'm, st- I'm sticking with Tomac and Cooper for now, but who are your picks? I went with Fernandez to start the year because of the, the momentum off of Supercross. I'm not going to bounce off of that. Not yet. I, I, nah, if I had to pick a guy, it's either him or Cincerello. I don't think Cooper... I, I don't think he's strong enough in both motos to get it done. Well, I think Dylan's going to really. do it. So. And I think Adam's going to be there, but I'm sorry. The way he was riding scared me. Literally scared Joe's me. Joe's got Adam, right? You have Adam. I'm afraid he's going to throw it away. I don't want him to, but I'm afraid yeah, he's going to do something. Stupid. I had Adam, but I prefer Dylan. But Joe loves Dylan, dude. Me like, too. Loves I, like him. I love him too. He's cool. now, he's, now he's talking trash. Yeah, yeah. I love it, dude. <laughs> I, 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 so much trash. Rider, dude. Please dude, share your opinion. Dylan and I bonded this year because he got second place so many damn times. So on the podium, it was always me. He got to the point where he was literally like, I do not want to talk to you anymore because because <laughs> I interview second every week, oh. and then I think the next week he got third. I was all, "What's up? You would like to talk to me now, right?" Dude, I like all the French no, guys. Uh, the French guys tell it how it is. I Maybe like, it's the language thing. I don't know. No, I I, I like Dylan a lot. And I like Adam a lot, but I just I, I honestly I'll I'll be straight up. I like Justin Cooper because he didn't do the typical amateur route. I'm sorry, but I like his background and his story and his route in. And that's why I like him. For the and record, I like that too. I love it. Uh, next one, Dustin McManus one five seven. What happened to Wilson Todd? Oh, that's his first name, Joe. It's not, I thought he was just the Do artist known. The that? artist known as Todd <laughs> uh, shredded last weekend on his own. Gets a factory ride and goes way backward. Yeah, I didn't see him ever on screen. There so was what? a huge. They didn't show it on TV. It was out of the corner. There was a nasty first turn pile up in that first moto. He was a part of that. Kyle Peters was a part of that. He never really got going. I think he DNF'd. And the second moto, he was decent. What, did he finish like 13th or something? Yeah. But I think he was still banged up. That was a bad crash. Um, and what did he, what'd the guy ask? Oh, what, what happened to him? Um, yeah, I, I, Hangtown wasn't a fair example. It was a mud race. And that, what you just said, isn't a fair example because he was caught up in some stuff. So I wouldn't look at either. I, w- I wouldn't look at it as a very good or very bad. I, I think it was solid was, both weeks, right? He was pretty fast in qualifying. I expected him to be somewhere between the... Five and fifteen range, five. Yeah, I, you five. Might, if there's a, I, the, did, yeah, how many okay. how many Pacificos okay. did Joe give you, dude? There's no uh, way. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I, okay, I might ten, have been off on that. I'll give I, you that. I, I feel like <laughs> honestly, I feel like there's a one through seven pack, then there's a eight through twelve pack, and then there's thirteen through twenty. That that's I see it broken up that way. Like Amart, I just don't think he's got the elite speed. I mean, I know he was good at Hangtown Second Moto, but I don't think he's going to have the elite speed with those guys every week. I think he's more in that eight to twelve. Um, unfortunately for him, that's half full. It's half empty also. Um, (laughs) but no, um, no, yeah. Fifth place for, for the artist formerly known as Todd is a little high for me. Hey, what'd you say about Amart? What were you saying about Amart? Uh, I just, I don't think he's got the The elite elite speed speed to run. He does. His machine does. not Well, you, you are, it's a man and machine game. Like if that's what you're on, that's what you're on. I, 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 Again, I don't know the personal side of things, but from so, what I understand, he's making pretty good money. I don't know how much he. But that, I mean, I'm sure he cares, but he also. If there's any Bank team America that can care. make a bike work outdoors, it's JGR. You don't think they can get it dialed in with him, or is he not good? At, is he? I don't know. Is he a very good tester? It, yeah, I think he is. It's just the engines, dude. I'm mean, straight up like, I mean, they're not getting 52 horsepower out of that Suzuki. It's just impossible. It, it doesn't. It's not built to allow it. It it will never be that fast. Yeah, I guess. So, and he gets good starts. Don't look. The Suzuki still get good starts because their power band is built a certain way. They're very good right out of the gate and definitely like under that early load. 
But dude, they're not going to scream out on those long starts. He's going to get eaten alive on the long start. In fact, Glen Helen, he should be happy they're not at Glen Helen. He would have got ruined on that track. That track is pure horsepower track, and that Suzuki just doesn't have it. It's just it's it's just facts. It, that, that bike does not have what the Yamaha and what the TLD bikes have, and then the PC and the Geico bikes are just right behind that. They, they, the Suzuki does not have that. Yeah, Geico in the past, I've thought, had missed their setup. This year, they look good. They, they figured they found it out. Something. They figured it out. It's better this year than it's been. It's they, That model that they have is not a very fast model, and they have it took them a while to get the power out of it, and they got it now. It looks great. It's too bad you're uh, J-Mark. I bet he's hurt. This be his year. I know. This would be. Ah, oh, man. That, I, I hey, what did you tell a after riding that tank? Uh, told Make him, you money, know, it's, it's about the effort. About the effort? <laughs> right. That's how I am with my son. Just as long as you try your hardest, right, Joe? Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yes. Now nah, you get strippers and blow. <laughs> uh, Austin, that, I mean, Joe's his father. What do you expect? Yeah, come on. Austin it's Saunders. It's code uh, word for do you, do you think another brand of 450 would help Plessinger? And then he says, I know he's currently out, which is, yeah. Um, uh, no, I, I actually think that the Yamaha can be ridden pretty well by bigger guys. You watch uh, Febra in France. He's a pretty big guy. I think AP will be able to ride the 450 Yamaha better than most, but I still think that bike's a little bit behind. Um, I think you're crazy. I have one of those bikes. I, I rode a one guy. a month ago. and But you're, you're the worst not 450. nearly as tall. That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't think everyone seen... can ride it. I think a big guy like him can make it work. But it's good. I think it is. Do they have, and it, the best power. I think it's if the best. If they had the best engine. rider, they'd win. Yeah, I said it. I'm trying to think of who in that. If you put I Eli, Eli, Tomac, I think Eli, Eli Tomac would win outside. He, he he wouldn't win Supercross, but he would win outdoors on a Yamaha. I think he I think he could too. I think he could too. But he, I, but to I, answer just, Austin's guy, question, wow. Plessinger will be okay on that bike. He'll be better than most. He's big. He's tall. He can he can ma- maneuver the thing a little bit better, like Febra does in Europe. Febra rides that thing a lot better than most do. A little I don't think little people can ride that Yamaha 450. They're well, Travis scary. Preston developed it, and I, I didn't realize until I stood next to him. Like he's six four. Yeah, 200. he's big, uh, long, and can make the bike do what he wants it to do. Uh, next one, Lest, uh, Jay Lester, oh five, three laps to go, and the race was really heating up during the four, first four fifty moto. And let's go to commercial. I wanted to punch Weege in the face. His fault or not? Well, I wanted to punch Weege in the face too. Next question. Well, that's just me. No, no, that's just by the app. If you're complaining about commercials, get off your cheap ass and buy the app. Yeah, Don't, Jay you took Lester. The time, you took the time to write a listener question when all you had to do was buy the app? Come on, bro. Come, come on, on, Jay Lester. Lester. Heads, come, come on, on. Jay Lester. Uh, but as far as that goes, I, I'll Don't tell punch you. punch Weege. I'll tell you. No, punch Weege. I'll tell you exactly what happens. The TV guys in the truck have to go to the commercial break, and they're gauging, and they're looking. They're going, okay, we're getting kind of late. Everything is kind of spread out. I, I think we, got, we can sneak it in. Let's get it in now because they have to. They have to. Too. It's not like, hey, the race is heating up. Let's screw the audience. They they literally are waiting. Uh, okay, let's do it. Let's go. Boom, and they hope. And it's just the worst luck ever that every time it happens, something happens. It's it is. It's Murphy's it's, law, right? It's things behind the scenes that are out of their control. I just I want everyone to be clear. They are not. Let's wait until the battle and then ruin it. That's not what I heard. Eli listens to the announcers and makes <laughs> adjustments accordingly. <laughs> so he waited till they were. Kevin Eli- Kelly, the track announcer, literally Eli, said, "We're on commercial break. Make your move. We don't want no one to see it." <laughs> yep, exactly. No, they do. That's, and, and according to so and according to Vincent, they don't want to tell you anything. And according to Vincent, Eli replies, "Sounds good." <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no. they're, they're secretive. That's how they do things, Daniel. All right. But no, it's just extremely bad. Like, even though they did get hosed by it a couple times yesterday, I, I even was like, come on. And I could have logged into my free app, but no, I'm stubborn. Next one, Stephen Howard, 7832. Has anyone ever wrote go faster on the pit board? Um, I don't really know how to respond to this question, so I'll let ngriff88 respond. He says, Covington's mechanic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Burn. Should we go there now? He's not wrong. Should we get it over with He's now? Not wrong. Get it yeah, over with. Okay. Over with. Separate. Personal and professional. Okay? I don't know Covington, but from what I know from everybody who does, says the dude is a really nice kid. I know people that know him well, and everybody loves Big Air Tom. I heard he's a really nice dude. He would have to be an amazing person to still have his job. So he must be an well, amazing yeah, person. No, no, okay, human being. I know, but in this sport, when you're in cr- contract, most of the time it means you're in contract. Um, 
he, he's got a job till the last round. And from what I understand, I don't know if this is true or not because it's it, this is one of those sticky things. I heard he has a two year deal, but the second year is a team option, which means the team can let him go if they want to let him go. And okay, now I'm going to shift to the professional side. Bro needs to have the gnarliest turnaround ever, or he's unemployed in three months, and nobody would pick him up because it just doesn't. It's just not good. It's just not good. And I don't know where to pinpoint it, other than the fact of if I'm doing my own math in my head, out of amateurs, it, he didn't have a locked in ride because he really wasn't that great as an amateur, so had to go the other route. Went to Europe, abandoned Supercross altogether. I think we saw that uh, in the last few months. <laughs> I thought okay? he looked good. That's rude because you know you're lying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that it took him long to develop over there even and he did towards those later stages when you're about to age out of that class and now he's coming back over here he's 24 or 25 years old and I don't I just I don't think he's got their pay I don't think he has the pace I don't think he has their intensity I don't think he's got their skill okay. set and I and I and I I don't see it turning around that first moto was really really bad you just said that he took that long to develop to become that guy. He was so good two years ago. We picked him to represent I, us in the Des Nations. I, He's no. not as bad as he rode. There's no way. That first moto was something you could possibly build off of. But then he came out in the second moto and had a great battle for like 20th with Leonette. Okay. But but, but I'm going to say one more thing too. And Where did this is, talent go? Though? I'm going to piss Where off. Did it go? I'm going to piss off all of our European fans and all the GP lovers out oh, there. Oh, come on. No, I'm going to say Don't it. Don't even do Hurlings it. Hurlings no. and Cairoli and Febra and Geyser are unreal. The 250. Jorge Prado beat all of our guys at the Des Nations on a 250. Prado. The rest of that class is pathetic. I watched the GP. I heard watched... Tom rode with Prado, though, and battled with sort him. Sort of. I, d- 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 I watched the GP the other day and I watched. And I. Dude, the 450 guys, I have so much respect. They're so sick. Even what's his name? Okay, who if, is they're, the, if they're who so is the bad. Who's the tall guy that rode Mitchell here? Harris and, uh, uh, Joss Aconis? Benny Blas? Ton- no, Tonus. Tonus. Dude is sick on a Yamaha 450. But I watched the 250 class. Dude, it's just not a, it's not on our level as it is over here. Covington, he's going to get swallowed up by our 250 guys over here. Okay, Mitchell Harrison, he was a top 10 guy over here. Sort he of. got a couple podiums. He's getting worked over there. And, but, but if they're so bad, why wouldn't he be a top guy? Because it's his first year. You got to learn that thing. Covington, to, how many years did it take Covington to learn there? He wasn't good year one. But it took not, a while. But they get two days of practice. It's not like ten minutes like we give him here. I I, I know this different game. You come over here, and that's why. And Hunter Lawrence too. As as high as I am on him, let me see it at a track you haven't been to. Do. He's been he raced Paula well, at if Amateur they're so National. Slow, how did ago. he almost win the second moto? It's not because Lawrence was squirrely over there and his program over there was not very good last year. It was not what he's on now. He he was good and then he took the Honda deal and the Honda deal was worse over there and he came over here. It, it's it's so hard to figure out the two. What I'm getting at is is I do not think that Covington's success over there is going to translate here. He it, it Lawrence is young enough and wild enough and you know the old saying, young, dumb, and whatever. Lawrence is going to adapt because he's going to go out there and twist it. Covington's not going to ride. Covington doesn't ride like that. It's not going to work here. He's going to get chewed up in the 250 class here. It's not going to work. Had they skipped Supercross and just brought him out for the outdoors, we'd be looking at a totally different guy. I agree. His confidence is gone. He looks scared. I agree. Every time he gets in a weird situation, he's hitting the brakes. He's hesitating. They've ruined him. They brought they him did. up too quick. They did, and six my, years and, later, he brought and, him up too and quick. And my Believe guess, it or not. but that's actually and, what happened. I know. Um, and my guess is, unless he has a unbelievable turnaround, he won't have a deal next year, and he'll be back in Europe trying to get a 450 ride. That's what's going to happen because he already well, showed you. Team in Europe's going to hire a guy that can't get top twenty Dude, out here on 250. Uh, he'll go. I, I don't know. Then maybe he's. I don't know. That might I, be the end of his career. I, it might be. I don't know. Um, Cycle trader. I don't think they would hire. <laughs> I wouldn't if I was. I mean, I, I'm for, again, separating personal and professional. Dude, sounds like a good dude. But if I'm just being a businessman right now, I, I wouldn't hire him. You but can't you, do Supercross, and you and you. If you're not going to be able to do Supercross, you better be a freak on outdoors. And he's not that either. So, so. you don't think there's any way he could find that speed that he had over there? Because at one point we thought it was decent. At one point, when he's winning GPS and chosen for the designations. Did you think he'd be a guy that battled for 20th at a national? No. I, I, but you don't think he can at least find a top 10 speed this year? Yeah, I think he could find 8 to 12 speed at, at best. I, he is not going to toy around with that top 5 group. No way. Yeah, I want to argue with you, but not, no not, not for what I saw this weekend. No way. Um, and don't forget, he's going to be learning these tracks all for the first time, too. And I'm I'm sorry, you just... I, 
I don't I don't want to go any further than what I'm saying. I just say it's it's not a good look, and I don't I don't see it changing. I I hope it does. Again, I, I everybody says he's a super good dude, but on the professional level, it's it's bad. Uh, next one, keep it ribbit. He says, "Is it bad?" I watched it on my phone at my grandma's funeral. She bought my first neck brace. R.I.P. Um, <laughs> no, Ribbit, that ain't bad. Ribbit? It's just commitment. He, well, I mean, talk about, yeah. He, we know you love your grandma, and we know you love Moto. So you combine both together. Yeah. Um, at least you didn't go to the race and watch your grandma's funeral on your phone. <laughs> yeah. Ex- yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Um, R.I.P. to Grandma Ribbit. Yeah. Uh, next one, K Crab 223 What's going on with Covington? Only scored points, one out of four moto so far. I don't want to just pound that into the ground. We just did, right? Do Next we, question. Yeah, thank you. I, I was I was confused on your feelings. I'm not sure. Okay, I just want to make sure. <laughs> you want me to yeah. want me to go over it again? No, we're good. Okay. Uh, Z Reed 240 at Chris Cooksey 61. By the way, what's the 61 for? Uh, somebody already took Chris Cooksey. So what's so the 61 that's my racing for? number? Oh, well, okay, it was yeah. racing number. Uh, Paula seemed to create some good racing. Was it the because the riders ride it regularly? Or was the layout just that good? Part two, for or against bongs replacing monster cans on the podium? All four bongs. All absolutely. for bongs. Are you kidding uh, me? Not, for, so not for the next yeah. five years, All though. All for bongs. Not for the next five yeah. years. I think the track worked out good. So they ripped these things so deep, they create complete ruts. The timed qualifying sessions, if that's the way the track would have looked, it would have been a shit show. It was like, muddy. Right? I yeah. heard press day was dry desert, and I heard race day practice or qualifying was just slop fest. Yeah, it, it it just worked out perfectly that they hit right in the middle where it wasn't dusty and it wasn't ruddy. It was I thought the track was rad. Honestly, I and I talked to Jacob Hayes about it. And he's like, dude, it was really tough. But he's like, I, I enjoyed every lap. It was like, it was brutal. But like felt, he said he felt rewarded while he was right. Like he's like, I felt like I, like he enjoyed how tough it was. It wasn't so tough that he was like, this place sucks. It was like, this is tough, but it was rad. It was a That's, little bit high speed, you know. It yeah, and they, that that place is like that. Yeah. That's a it's a freeway. No, uh, yeah. I, I, I thought it looked good. I thought the track was pretty dope, um, and the racing was pretty. good. I don't think there was much passing. Um, you had to really, really earn it. But at the same time, I was enjoyed watching the inside outsides and sweeping and trying. It, it, it was it was a cool track. I you had it. to you had to be you had to have big balls to pass because it was a lot of the late breaking where like Cincerillo would just hold it on down those hills and. Like how Colt, when he came, he passed oh. Colt, and Colt tried to do the same thing, and damn near ran off the track. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Uh, that that going into that corner, uh, who else did that? Eli and Anderson, I think, almost got into it right there once too. And they were landing off that big tabletop, like two inches from the edge. Yeah. And had they gone off, it would have been bad. There was a spot right after the second corner that had a weird kicker that I thought Osborne was going to crash on. They were hit the far left side. It was just like a little quick double, but it was kind of a kicker. They were it was sketchy, but no, I, track was dope. Uh, M Gomes nine one one DB. I heard you guys mention the Los Banos Fairgrounds race in last week's podcast with Nyan Mason. What are the odds of hashtag main event moto and at rep racing maybe bringing that series back? Maybe have at producer Joe Gallo announce. Make Los Banos race again. Uh, have you ever heard of the Los Banos, what they used to do there? No, tell it's me a little, about it. little crappy fairgrounds place, and they used to have the raddest fairground racing all summer long. And yeah, it went away, and it's sad. But rep racing replies with the emoji with the hand up. So maybe old Zeb is going to get in there and do something. I wish he would. I wish Thanos was my life, dude, forever. It dude, was, how 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 do you make a living as a pro if you can't make money at the Nationals? Because there's not as nearly as many no, money races. As there there's used to no be. there's no money races anymore. It's it, it's the sports changed, dude. In fact, it's crazy because I literally made my whole living during the summer, my whole career. It was I I raced Supercross. So I could get my sponsors, so I could get everything paid for during the summer, so I could race fairgrounds and make money. Like I made a living racing Los Banos, and it sucks that it's not there. It was awesome. Black Sheep three five six. What's your over under for overall wins for Tomax or Tomas? He says uh, misspelled. He Tomas. says he's is that, feeling is that Covington. Tomas Covington. Thomas. Uh, yeah, none. Um, I'm feeling about seven for Tomax. Is what he says. What do you think for wins out of twelve? Um, Seven to nine. Seven being the low, nine being the high. Yeah. I'll Roxon say. will get one. I think Marv can get one. You think? Yeah, Roxon. Uh, yeah. Baggett's going to all of a sudden wake up one day. Uh, maybe. I don't know. He, I don't know, dude. How come he gets a pass on this whole missing persons thing? Like, Tomac, we're hammering him, but Baggett, does, he does the same thing. Where was he this weekend? 
He just doesn't himself have out the first moto. Um, but he didn't have it before I, then. I don't know with him. I'm he's he's confusing too. I don't understand because even in Supercross, like one week it's like super average, and the next week he's like the fastest. Yeah, maybe he needs an alter ego too. Maybe we need a name for him. You can come up with that one. Um, I'm not doing Joe, it. Joe, yeah, you go for it. No, he's a fly rider. I can't. I don't bag on fly riders. You already you can't do. Either. Bruce Willis, you got play. That's different. That's because he looks like Bruce Willis. Well, he doesn't actually look. I, <laughs> I don't know. Do you think he looks more like Bruce Willis or Benjamin Button? Bruce Willis. That's You're being nice. Uh, next one for I Drum for the King. When did handicap gate drop start? I must have missed that one. Hard to believe some team managers weren't raising a bunch of noise as you could clearly see a few guys still behind the gate while others had dropped and were gone. Yeah, where were the managers on that one? Cooksey, why, why were they, they weren't, well, you weren't close enough. But I believe the TLD manager was saying, it was good. What are you talking about? Um, well, it's because Shane Holeshot, yeah, which, how about Shane? Um, see, speaking a, of guys that you I'm should probably. I'm a very, very, very close personal friend with Shane McElrath, one of the most respectful people in the sport. Again, if you separate to business, though, it's rough start, man. Like, rough. talking about Shane, does he not look like a middle-aged Cub Scout leader with that little uh, bit of hair on top? Yeah, it, you know it's funny you said that too because brother, at one brother, point, brother McElrath. At one, <laughs> <laughs> that wakes Joe up a little bit right there, <laughs> brother McElrath. He um, he does look older than his age, uh, and at one point, I think on screen they showed and it said Shane McElrath twenty-four. I was like, oh my god, I forgot he was. My wife young. saw that and she goes, "No way!" Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, I think so." So you you went personal there. I'm trying to. I was just profe- no. He's he saw it. I, he's he, he's one of the most polite, nice guys out there. But he does look like a Cub Scout leader, and he's not riding. Great, right? You know now. what? Just pause for a sec. Who gives a shit how nice and polite they are? Nobody ever talks about that in any other sport. When Stephen A. Smith is railing against the Warriors and Charles Barkley railing against the Warriors, they're not talking about how nice a guy is, like as if that's going to come into play. The reason why is because we have to see them. Forget it. And this is so a sensitive what? sport. And if no. you if they don't like you, you get blocked. Like, Cooksey, a long break. Uh, beyond that, I don't mind getting blocked. Cooksey I don't asks, mind he seeing asks him, the tough questions. But I, I don't mind seeing him. I would not say anything about somebody that I would not say. If he said that, if he was hitting here, sitting here, I'd bust his balls and say, you look like a Cub Scout leader. I would. That's what I would. <laughs> totally. But here's the thing. As like, you, you should. can't get pissed about that. But the thing is, I get pissed is when they go other routes and they try to affect our sources of income. Because we all have different jobs inside the industry. That's how they do it. And that pisses yeah, me off. Yeah. Um, I know what you're saying, but Joe, but that's a. He's bigger profile and a bigger sport, and he don't have to answer those again. For me, I'm just putting a disclaimer that I really think these guys are nice guys so that when I do hammer them a little bit on the professional side, it's like a disclaimer. Go, look, the dude's a nice dude. I'd like to have lunch with him. He seems like a good dude, but... What if we just made a blanket statement for here till eternity, (laughs) till the end of time, till the rapture happens, that they're all nice guys. We get that. Don't ever have to say that again. They're not all nice so guys. So nice guys is like, <laughs> they're not all like nice. with all due respect. So except for the ones that aren't, then you can point that out. So just say whatever. And if they're not, then just trash them. Yeah. Not only is this guy sucking, but he's also an asshole. With all due respect. Right, right, right. It's So do the opposite, basically. Only mention it if they're not a nice guy. Okay, well. And I mean that industry-wide, not just you, DB. All right, well, minus the bad luck. This is from JSN411. Minus the bad luck, would you now consider my fellow Aussie Hunter Lawrence the real deal? He killed it at Paula. I heard he's a really nice dude. Um, <laughs> if you're not first, you're last. Yeah. Actually, I heard that dude's got quite a personality on him. Well, you guys said earlier that Hunter's looking Did good. I say that? He's okay. Lawrence is looking dope. I heard that. Um, and yeah, he looks great. But I do want to see it uh, on a new track. Again, he's been riding Paula like for months. I mean. You know what I heard? Dude, the dude didn't race Supercross. He's been literally riding out there for months. So let's see it at another track and then I'll be all in. But right now I have I'm half in. I got one foot in the door on Lawrence. Supposedly his little brother is as fast or faster than him. And he's like 15. at Paula. Yeah. It's just not legal to race yet. Sheesh. Yeah. He, there's another one of them coming. And I yeah, I heard the second one's a little even better than him. Younger brothers are always better. Uh oh, just ask Vincent. Oh, yeah. Oh, ask Vincent wait. how many times he beat me at a supercross. Oh. Ask him oh, oh, no. No, scoreboard. No, it's zero. Oh no. Not one moto. Ever. Uh, next one, R Camp 99. Chris Cooksey is very well versed in head injuries and the new fly helmet. How does it differ from the 6D and what separates it functionality wise? Uh, you should do a segment and have him speak about how his treatments for prior brain injuries have changed his life and can help others. I know a little bit about that, and I don't. We don't need to go nah, too that's far. Like, that's like a whole show. I know, but you also work for Western Power Sports. I got to put that out there. Sorry. Oh yeah. Um, so obviously you know more about the fly helmet than most do, and you have dealt with injuries, and you're. You know more about it than most, so quickly tell us the differences and just 
the experiences that you've had with that? Quickly, they both use rotational. Fly has developed the Rion, which also not only does it do rotational impacts, but it does head-on impacts. It's a little bit lighter and it's better. And in that price, like that category, it's the lowest price. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, and then as far as the brain injury stuff, concussions, I know you got some experience and knowledge in that too. Yeah, I did. I did a treatment for transcranial magnetic stimulation. And what it does, like people, they treat concussions as it's like a straight up injury. So they check your like brain. Like a broken bone. Yeah. Hey, is your brain bleeding? No. Okay, well, you're good. Go home. You remember everything? Okay, kind of. Yeah. Well, they don't look at stuff that it affects your temper, your emotions, things down the road. And what I did is a, a treatment where they kind of react your, your, uh, like kind of the, they hit your brain and kind of reset it. Okay. So, yeah, and I did it. It's f-ing. Really? Yeah. And it needs to be probably done a lot more in the sport because this, that's a thing that this sport does not talk about enough is concussions happen a lot and these guys are back way too Yeah, and if anybody, soon, anybody wants to know what the treatment I did was, go to hprtc.com. That's hprtreatmentcenter.com. You can get it anywhere. If you're a vet, all veterans are covered because they're using it for PTSD. It's really good for really? that. ADD, which every motocrosser has, because probably that's our personality, and we all hit our heads. All right. Wow. All right. So what was the website it. again? HPRTC.com. If you got questions, hit me up on my Instagram. I did some YouTube videos documenting my whole process. That's on my YouTube channel, Chris Cozy. So, yeah, check it out. Nice. Cool. All right. Well, shout, uh, out, shout out to our camp for the good question right there. Well, and our camp. Yeah. Do you know our camp? Yeah, I know our camp. Yeah, saying, Robert Campbell. He's a bad dude. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah he's a Vegas he's, guy, right? Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Neutron 987. How would AC do outdoors 450? I can see him being about Osborne's level. Dang, those GP guys are fast. Uh, fire emoji, keep it up. Love the show. What are you guys laughing for? Because the GP, GP 250 guys, guys are fast. No, they're not. I mean, they are, but they're not as fast as ours. I'm sorry. And if, if Adam rode with that same style on a 450, he would win by a minute or die. Yeah, one of the two. Um, I, I, It's hard to tell, really, though. Until you see someone... I feel like Supercross is so... The tracks are all the same. You you kind of know what you're getting, so you can see a guy ride and go, yeah, he'll make the transition. Outdoors, I don't, I can't tell as well. But the way AC is riding right now, I just feel like God, if the guy had 200 CCs more, like God, he would be really damn good. And I, from what I understand, we'll find out uh, next week uh, or next year. Sorry, still man four four one. How's everybody doing in that Pulpamex fantasy stuff? Um, doing real good. Extremely still average man. for me. Extremely good for these two who are battling it out. We're crushing it. Uh, Jay Davis 219 for Husky team manager Bobby Hewitt what is the plan with Thomas Covington now and what do you do with him wasn't wasn't Bobby Hewitt here earlier talking with us about this that was Daniel Hewitt here <laughs> talking um, and again I don't know the exact details on the contract I just if you're a team manager in the sport you're in a tough spot because you have these young kids you bring up and you want to develop them but at the same time you need results if your young guys aren't showing the promise then you don't want to keep them. And sometimes, though, the landscape, there's nobody available. You keep your guys because there's no one out there to take their place. That's what last year was. I, Mosman, I think, got his deal because there was nobody else. They're like, ah, I guess we'll give him another shot. I think, I think it was between him and Mitchell Harrison, right? Yeah. And they kept Mosman, and it paid off. Maybe they do the same thing with Bailey. Maybe they don't. Maybe TLD does the same thing with Falk and Cantrell. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I would hate to be in that situation. But if I was trying to model any team, it would be more the star Yamaha way, which is poach man take the guys when they're ready i mean too they i'm telling you right now poach I, but let's give them three years let's not give them God. one yeah but then but, but then but then you're signing them to seven year deals four amateur three pro and it's like dude what if they get in the no, year one the, and they well, yeah suck. no I, I see what you're saying but you don't have to do three amateurs if you poach then you just take them for three well, like star just poach, poach for three fry. but and i'll tell you right now I, I'll, I'll i'll let y'all in on a little nugget let's get the nugget. there might be Another extremely high profile poaching coming from Star Yamaha. Star, let's just say, is trying to grab a very, very, very good guy off another team right now, and it very, very, very well likely is gonna happen. And when it happens, Uh-oh. when it happens, huh. just know that I spilled huh. I planted the seed right now. Again, See, this is this is what Joe and I talked yes, about. Yes, exactly. You give us this nugget, this but you don't tell us. Scenario. Okay, well let me tell Come y'all on. what it is so that I never get told one thing ever again by anybody. Okay. Or I can hint yeah, it so fine. you guys can all no, get all you, we, excited. We said yes. Oh, okay. oh no. No. <laughs> or what I'll do is what I just did, which is plant a little seed, and when it comes true, you can go, wow, okay. 
there was something there, and then we'll talk about it. Thank you so much for the seed. All right. I got Daniel's seed. Yeah. You do. <laughs> How much more do you want? I'll give you more. I got a lot of seeds right now. I, oh, dude, I'm boy. telling you, it, it sucks for me because I'm the more I'm becoming connected with information, the mm-hmm. harder it is for me to do this show. It is what it is. I'm sorry. Do you got a towel? I think he's got some tears we got to dry up. <laughs> I do. No, those are just tears from earlier. I was emotional. <laughs> Ashman428, what's more red? Cincerello's number plate or Forkner's eggplant emoji? Oh, you could take that. It's all you, Joe. That's uh, you, Joe. It, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what this means. I, you know exactly what it is, means. Is it, does it mean what I think it means? Yeah. Then I, yes. I'm surprised you actually even asked it. Uh, I, Forkner for sure. I saw that one just now come across the little thingy, and I'm like, uh, he's never going to ask this one. No, I did. Um, <laughs> Forkner, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. Motomart 78 DB at Hunter Lawrence is the real deal. I think he could have had a 2-1 overall if it weren't for a couple issues. Which round do you think he will get his first win? Also, what up, Joe? What up, Moto Mort? Um, I don't. What's next? Colorado. Uh, AC's going to win Colorado. So is Tomac. Um, the Pro Circuit guys crush that race no matter what. Uh, Pro Circuit, for whatever reason, really does have elevation figured out. They're always good there. Um, then where's Tomac's it going? actually Morris? not that good there. Yeah, actually, that's funny because uh, Baggett worked him a couple years yeah. ago there. It's that hometown pressure. Yeah, but he killed. But it's the like eight hours from his home. Yeah, he lives. He, yeah, <laughs> he's close the to home Phoenix. state pressure. We we refer to the state as his home. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Come back used to always say that Glendale was his home race. It's it because is, it was a, that's closer. That's like it's four the short, hours. It's the shortest flight. It is. Um, okay, so what do you think he gets his first win, Lawrence? Uh I'll say that Florida round, the sand track, a little bit. I'm guessing Lawrence coming from the GPS probably has a lot of some experience in sand. I'll I don't go Florida. Know. I'll go Lawrence wins Florida. I go, he doesn't get a win this year. No overalls? Nope. Oof. Wow. Dude, Hater. look at the guys he's going against. Racist. Hates Cooper. Australians. Dude, Brandis. he just did won that second moto. He was, he was on. Uh, yeah, I don't on, know. Again, on, that's a, like, on a track, like said, he's been riding for three tr- months. Exactly. I know. Okay. Exactly. Uh, if, if it happens, I'll go Florida race. All right, next one. End I'll take Sexton 88. before him. Well, I'll take RJ Hampshire at Florida, too. RJ's riding freaking good right now. Getting a bunch of good results for Geico on his way out the door. And Griff 88, <laughs> uh, can you tell Weege to shut his timer off so we don't hear it on the air? People are freaking out saying that they could hear a beeper or something. Yeah, I've uh, heard it. I didn't hear it because I watched the races low volume. It was early this morning. so um, Isn't it only during the commercials, though? I have no idea. I think it's during the commercials to let them know the commercial breaks over. I could be wrong. I but. don't know. And Griff comes back with more. He says, did Stank Dog drop his dime back in the start and fall over for it? What happened? Did you see something? Hey, no. props to Stank Dog for getting in the Fast 36, though, on the 125, just pissing off dads all over the place. Think about all these privateer dads just forking out $7,000 engines, and then you got this hippie, who, by the way, is overweight, flying by them on a 125. That's, Stank- how, that's how you get kids to quit real quick, right there. After that, it looked like, after, after he qualified in, I believe Stank was probably done for the day, and then he put his attention on Zane, his son, that... Finished like 21st or 22nd. Oh, yeah. You were mentioning Who's this kid? You said he's Baby Stank? Zane, what's the last name? Zane Merritt. Baby Stank. Baby Stank. Looks just like him. Wow. Let's see. Where did Zane? I've seen that Zane kid. finished yeah. up 25th. At, did he? At a Crow, Crowley, Texas. Yeah, he gets mistaken. He spent a lot of time. He, he gets of, mistaken yeah. for Stank quite a bit. He's like Stank, but smaller. Stank puppy. All yeah. Right. Well, good job, buddy. You're uh, just. <laughs> I believe Stank was coaching him as he, as he lapped him. <laughs> probably is like, you allowed to give signals to other riders, like <laughs> like, like pit board signals. Yeah. Uh, Nate Dog Thirty Eight. How does at producer Joe feel about Drake's team, the Raptors, making it to the finals? Uh, yeah. Are you nervous at all? What's up, Nate Dog? You were more nervous about the Bucks and the Raptors, weren't you? I was a little bit more concerned about the Bucks just because of previous seasons and the performance they're in. The but, Raptors uh, are, dude. Cowie though. Cowie. <laughs> Cowie Leonard. Cowie. Cowie. Uh, Kawasaki Cowie's Leonard. Good. <laughs> he is, bro. Yeah, the Raptors are great. Are you, it's are you be nervous a, good, a little bit? Uh, no. Hey, is, what's Durant? Cocky. Is he back or is it Tornado? No, he's not back. He's he's taking, he's taking doing light duty. He hasn't even stepped on the court yet, though. So is it an Achilles injury? It was a... Is he done? It was is a, he out? No, the they, they, they keep saying that he'll, he'll be back. Not for the game, first or second game, but at some point... When does it start? This Thursday. My Why is there such a big gap? just takes a lot of production to get it ready and Stupid. besides that you never know Who's how long the series is going to go right. you know he won't come back unless they're losing yeah i don't 
I would like it if he. This will be weird, but I would like it if he doesn't like show back. But they win. They look the better court. without. But of, of you want them win. to win, but if you had your way, they would win I'll, without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want them to yeah. win without KD for they sure. Look better without yeah. him. and and Boogie. I think they do too. Get rid of both of them. No, I mean they're cool, but no, they're not. Um, Boogie's a biatch and Durant is a biatch. <laughs> so a biatch. both of them. Are. Looking at through that purple, purple colored Kings lens. No, whatever. <laughs> Odd cousins. No, and Durant too. Just a complete wuss. You can't carry. Can't do it on your own, bro. Man, got to join your buddies. Uh, M Gomes nine and one one at producer Joe Gallo. You ready for the finals? Oh yeah, Gomes, ready? ready for this shit. Stout fifteen DB. What are the better odds? AC to Honda or Savachi to Honda for twenty twenty? Um, P.S. At producer Joe Gallo, I love you. Oh, I love you too, Stout. <laughs> no, it's for me. I love you. Oh. And Stout. Um, heart emoji. Uh, AC to Cowie. And from what I understand, Joey is the prime target for Honda. But again, we talked about it earlier, teased it. Honda is in a good spot because you got some talented guys out there in position for spot number two. And take the cheapest one, really. I mean, I guess, right? No, I think that's a bad move. I think they, Savachi's a guy that I, if I'm a team manager, I want that guy. So do I, I. He can win. Over he's, Wilson? He's, unfortunately, yes. Unless I'm marketing something that needs a lot of social followers, I'm going with Savachi. He's I mean, good. He, he is he's really, good. I, he's I, got a really good chance. He could become the guy. Remember how good he was on 250s? He battled Webb for titles. Uh, I, he, I, he could, I know. Hey, you're talking to a Savachi so fan right and he could here, just, dude. He could just turn it. I, He's close. I think, I think, I think it's the best I think fit. they're crazy if they don't take him. I honestly, when it's all said and done, I think Savachi ends up at Honda. Um, I think JGR, from what I understand, I actually heard this on the Fly Moto 60 show. They're pretty dang close. Um, JGRs on getting a title sponsor. Yep. And if they do, from um, I had to sit down with Chad Reed. It may or may not have been at four in the morning at a bar uh, at one of the races <laughs> this year. And Chad literally was like, JGR needs to have... They need to stack up with some good guys. They need Dino. They need Cole. Like they need me. They like he literally laid this out for me months ago that, that it should be him, Wilson and Seeley. And I would not be surprised if it's Wilson and Seeley. And then Chad, from what I understand, might be doing his own deal through them, but on the side because there's some sponsor conflicts that he's not happy about. So um, that I that's what I heard. has he ever been 100 percent happy? Never. But that's what makes him great. Too, that is true, it, dude. And he Chad yeah. Reed is very picky about the things he wants, but that's what makes him good too. And sometimes it. Probably backfires a little, but for the most part, Chad's pretty damn awesome because he is picky. M. Gomes has another... Dude, M. Gomes. M. Gomes coming in. Guys, AC has looked solid the last two weeks. Is it safe to say Vegas is in the pass and he's all in on this 250 title? He'll say the right things, but... It'll never be in the past. Never be in the past. No, that, that that's a moment that will... Li- the best thing that could ever happen to Joey Savacci is what Adam did in Vegas. Because now everyone will remember that one and not the one where Osborne... I mean, you'll still remember Osborne blasting Savachi. But the AC one is... Uh, it, oh, I love AC, it's, but that was the biggest... It's considered a bigger... I hate to see use the C word. It's considered a bigger choke because Savachi got own. blasted. Savachi got blasted. He was all alone. Yeah, um, it does. And, and it's not a choke. He cracked. Oh, MC. yeah. Sorry. He cracked. That's right. Uh, next one from Moto Two XS at Rep Racing Cal Expo Fairgrounds race. So now our, our listeners are talking to our sponsors and trying to get them to make races. That's awesome. And dude, knowing Zeb and Rep Racing, probably figure out a way to do it. J Mudge eight four three. Whose talent would you rather? Ha- this is a good question. Whose talent would you rather have, Tomac or Roxon? Which one do you think is more talented? Wow, that's a really good question. Because I'm I would gonna say Roxon. I would say like Anderson. Um, even Barsha to a point, Hill. I I think they have more talent. Would be the word. You know, I would give them the nod on just their bike abilities. But total package, Tomac and Roxon obviously have more. But between those two, pure talent. Well, does does I think Roxen. does mental strength include in talent? No, nope, no. Nope, this okay. is just okay. In that case, I'm gonna talent. go. In that case, Tomac for talent. That, yeah, I don't feel like Tomac is. I feel like Tomac is more of a grunt powerful force his way to make things happen and Roxon I think is a little bit more skilled like 5% I mean we're ta- I'm not we're talking yeah this I'm talking much. I'm talking that violent speed like Stewart had Tomac yeah, has that Tom- is, is that considered does. part of talent that's no, talent I, I, I don't know Jay Mudge when you say talent are you meaning just natural ability because I think Roxon has a little bit more natural ability we're talking natural ability I'm gonna go Justin Hill but yeah don't even argue he's the I mean next to J-Law 
and Travis Pastrana, those are probably the three most talented riders I've ever seen. Mookie's but, close. Mookie, too, well, and Jen James, but James doesn't count. He's in a league of his own. James did stuff that normal human beings should never do. But yeah, in, in current form, Justin Hill's the most talented. It's not even close, and that's what makes it so frustrating. Clark Borden, were you guys serious about Red Bud Live? No. Uh, next one from Clark Borden. Is <laughs> A-Stars upping their game with the new kits, i.e. Barsha, Tomac? Do you guys like those looks? I like the purple on Tomac. I didn't like it with his helmet because it was just like weird. Like The blue and red helmet with the purple gear and the green bike looked odd, but I did like the gear alone. Barsha's looked horrible. He looked like he went to a paintball tournament and just got lit up. I, I, didn't, I didn't like it. Yeah, I didn't either. So now, does speaking of A-Star, do they go after Cincerillo? Who knows, dude? They got so much money. I think Fox... I think Fox goes full K Rock on them and just doesn't let AC go anywhere. Would you? If you're Fox, dude, you're not letting AC go anywhere. No, He's but so I, I don't know that they're in that kind of a situation. The way they're bored, I don't know if they can though. Yeah, it depends on their budget because they are ran weird now. They're not. Yeah, they're not Fox. the good old days where they no. just write blank checks. No, and A Stars is yes, they good are. old days. They just. Again, we're talking about a Gabriel gear company. Gabriel wants what he wants, and he gets it. And we're talking about a company that doesn't even really sell the gear. Like They don't distribute it. They don't do anything. They just spend like millions of dollars to brand their logo through the gear. It's, it's actually they have pretty brought, damn They have smart. brought it into exclusive dealers here. That's crazy. We'll see how long the distributors put up with that. I mean, if you're WPS, you can't be happy about that. I mean, you're pretty tight with them on the boot thing, and then the gear thing is – Fly is WPS, and I'm – that, that's why Scott abandoned their gear back in the day because, dude, they brought in their gear. It was pretty dope, and all the distributors are like, dude, we're not going to push your goggles if your gear is competing against our gear companies. Yeah, but their boots are so good and such a brand name, you don't have to push them. You just put them in there, and they go. I know. It's still it's it's sticky. They, they hold all the leverage for now. It, yeah, it's like you said, it is sticky, but right. for now, they hold it all. Joe, uh, a number between three and five. How many more listener questions? Uh, three. Wow, somebody has to go to the bathroom. Someone's <laughs> got a potty. Um, Amar is strong. Oh, this is from Cody Seiler. Uh, write that down. Somebody's got a potty. That might be the title of this week's show. That's a horrible Cody word. Seiler. Amar is struggling with no. consistency already this season. What is producer Joe going to say to fix it? Also, is his contract up this year? The contract is not up this year. He's got another year on it. Um, and as far as consistency, Joe, what are you going to tell him? You know, just uh, keep it on two wheels, buddy. You're doing fine. Just speed make it, that money, Speed right? it up a little bit. Okay. Third gear pinned. I noticed on podium interviews... Will backs out of the camera view after she asks the rider her question and why all and then all you see is her arm. Why? I know both Will and DB did it during Supercross as well. Good what question. Do you think? What do you think, Cooksey? I don't know. I'm looking at you. You tell I me. I want your guess. I want your guess, Joe. Because you question, are afraid you... the question you asked is going to result in you getting assaulted? No. <laughs> what do you uh, think, Joe? Yeah, that was my guess, too. Uh, no, it's because when they zoom in on the profile of the rider, it's to get closer on him, and they don't want your tip of your nose and face in it. So you ask the question so they can see you, and then as soon as you back away and you're not talking, they profile in on the rider and just the microphone, and you see the hand. What if I want to see the tip of her nose? Um, get the gold app? I don't know. Is it different? I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. But um, Okay, actually, Joe, my next question is going to be, Four questions, all quick, because oh, wow. right. Mysterion one five seven brings four in a row. Like, dude, just wow. could have put them all in one. Ooh, fire. Mysterion, oh. yeah, but it, you say that now, but if they were to do that, you'd then be I like, would have skipped Mysterion. It. This you know is what? too long. Know, I'm you not know reading why? this. You know why? Because Will the Wilson, I'm skipping that one right before it oh. because it's so damn long. I can't read it. Yeah. So Mysterion, good, good move. We're gonna close it out quick with these ones. All right. All right. You ready? Yeah. Cooksey, you ready? Take a deep breath. Mysterion157, any truth to AC's 450 deal being done? Yep. Done. Mysterion157, will Heartraft be filling a spot on PC for 2020? No. Maybe. I don't think so. What, from information you know, or you just don't think so? From his results and the Heart guys Raft? that are available. Who's better than Heartraft and Hayes? Who's better available than Heartraft and Hayes? They're, they, I'm not talking about Hayes because you're going to get all pissed. I'm going to go ahead and say McAdoo's really good. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, McAdoo's you, better than Heartraft. He got a podium this year. He podium last Vegas round. Supercross. I, I know. I know. I like McAdoo He's fast. too. I if if I, knowing the landscape the way that I know it, I think Heartraft, Hayes, and McAdoo will all end up on something. There, there's yeah. No, I'm not saying Heartraft. TLD's going to have two spots. He's too Plus big He's going to have one, though. and PC's going to have one. There's four spots, three riders. Uh, Heartraft will be on. Heartraft got 12th second moto. He did pretty damn good. This Hold on, who'd moto. you say PC was going to be? They're going to have one spot open. 
And McAdoo gets it. Oh, speaking of poaching, too, let's just say PC and Star are both aggressively trying to poach two riders off of another team, and it's probably going to happen. Seeds planted. You'll all Ooh. find out soon. Uh, next one. What is TLD going to do for riders in 2020? Uh, I don't know. What do you mean, do for riders? Take them to the races? What do you mean? What are they going to have for riders? What's your guess? Oh. I'm pretty sure McElrath's locked in, and I believe he's not going 450 because he's eligible because there was a back injury. Yep. Um, I believe Jordan Smith's probably going to get poached. And then, I don't know. I don't know. Good mm. question. Good Mac- question. McAdoo? Good question, Mysterion 157. Uh, next one from Mysterion 157. Last one of the day. With a classic scenario of too many for too little 450 spots, who gets shafted the worst this silly season? That's the last question. Dino again. Nope. Dino will get something, I think. I hope so. I th- I think Hill and Seeley are in the worst spots. Um, Is Seeley going to retire? I heard that this weekend. Uh, maybe if he doesn't get a deal. See, some, see, that's why I wonder. Some writers, if they don't get a deal, will just be like, I'm, I'm out. Like, Jake Weimer kind of played around for a little while and then was like, I'm out of here. Um, Hill, who knows? I don't, I don't know his motivation. I don't know if he wants to keep, I don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I think that the 450 silly season is going to sort itself out here pretty quick. And I think the 251 is going to take a while. And I think the 251 is going to look pretty different. I think there's a, I think there's going to be some shocking changes to a couple teams and a couple spots here in the next month or two. So hmm. interesting. Yeah. That's what I think Thanks for that. Thanks for that. That I don't know the answer to. Yep. That's what I think. There's your seeds. Um, show title, Joe, planting seeds. <clears throat> I like Daniel seed. Yeah, I like Daniel seed. Cause I, I clearly got Daniel. Seed. Cooksie, so yeah, that's horrible. I should plenty of it. It's extremely. <laughs> that's horrible. Uh, Daniel. Apostrophe that made me cringe. Seed. Saying it. Sorry Daniel's about that. I apologize. Seed. Here I am a guest wow. in the back cave. We got all for bongs too. Hmm. I'm sure, Race Rex would love that one. Yeah. Let's stick with someone. So you've, has gone, to, you've gone corporate. So Joe, Joe has to potty. I did not go on corporate. I said just, the F word. Said, I said the F word twice in this show. You just said you wouldn't do it because of Racer X. It's <laughs> I know, but it's still, so it's corporate. bongs. You the know what I mean? Like, so the corporate. Strings. What a corporate bro. Pulling the strings. Guess what? Nobody pulls my strings. Corporate I pull bro. my strings. I'm a. All, and guess what? I'm a puppet. And guess who's pulling? And guess who's pulling these strings? I'm your puppet, Daddy. Yeah, uh, I am. Vincent. I, I pull my own strings. Vincent pulls. I say those what strings. I want, and I do what I want. That's Mags. why I drop two F words. Maggie. Actually, my wife pulls the strings. Me and her are not on good terms right now. Uh oh. Fact. Before we go, we'll close it with a yes, story, Joe. Yes, you can stay the night. Okay. Um, <laughs> my son crashed yesterday in his third moto, and my wife, for whatever reason, I'm not sure, I think a little bit of intoxication maybe, decided to hop the fence and run right out on the track to save her son. <laughs> and it was so unneeded that I actually had to chew her. Like, I was like, you stay on that side of the fence. You, you back to the trailer. You do not hop fences and slide into the track with oncoming riders because your son is Ooh. laying there like a dead fish for no reason. Evan crashed. Army crawls off the track and then lays himself out like he's dead in the middle of the track. <laughs> and I get to him and I'm like, I'm freaking out. Are you okay? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I hurt my leg. And I said, oh, get your ass up on the bike and finish this moto now. Because we have a rule. Injured or hurt. If you are injured, we'll, we're going to the hospital. I mean, it's serious. If you are just hurt and you have an owie, Get your ass up. Do not dead fish on the side of the track when it's just an owie. Yeah. Because mom and dad, now you got mom hopping fences, Ooh. sliding into the track. You got dad having a heart attack when he's 100% fine. Five minutes later, he's running around, rolling around oh. in the grass with his friends. Like, seriously, like he had to have a talking to. I said, from now on, when you crash, you give us a thumbs up or the thumbs up. If it's thumbs down, you're going to the hospital. Yeah. And you're getting a shot. Yeah, shots. scary. Like no matter that. what it is, yeah, they're yeah, sticking yeah. a needle in you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are fine, you let us know so mom doesn't break her ankle <laughs> hopping fences because you're laying it laid out like you're knocked I'm out. I'm surprised mom out. didn't light his ass up because oh, she doesn't she put up with that shit. She did. She well, I, when I got to him, she was already ruining him because, dude, it's scary as a parent. Like if you're hurt, we need to know, but don't lay there when you're fine. Daniel, I, over dramatic. I, I feel BS. your pain. I was downhill mountain biking with my kid. Needless to say, I'm still paying emergency room. Bills and my kid was playing tag later on that day. So yeah, this is it. I feel you guys is pain too. One one night uh, we couldn't find one of the dogs and it was at the front porch just kicking it. <laughs> Our hearts like sunk, you know. It's scary, right? I feel yeah, you, Joe. Right. I feel you. Did you spank the dog? No, I just got a strong talking to. 
Okay. Has it happened since? No. All right. Well, wish me luck. Yeah. Not, ma- not mad. You're just disappointed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I am not disappointed in Nature's Bakery, Fly Racing, Skivy Underwears, Mika Metal, Scott USA, No Toil. Code word, wait for weed. Uh, Honda Cowie, KTM of Modesto, Guts Racing, EMT Racing, Key Bar, Rep Racing. Cooksy, thanks for coming in the show. Um... Yeah, thanks for thanks having for me, man. It was yeah. awesome. No, it's cool. Dude, the Bat Cave is kick ass. Yeah, I, it I is. dig it, man. Thanks it for having is. me, there's, Joe. There's, no problem. There's bro. beer and bongs and <laughs> there ain't no bongs. And blow and strippers. Plenty of blow. All, I thought all Tommy all Lee was here, but it's actually just Joe. Plenty of yeah. blow, no bongs. And uh for for confirmation before we close the show, Cooksey is Joe African American. Main event mode. Ah, screw it. You know it by now.